that I am the returning officer for the 2023 National South Senatorial District election. The election held on 25th day of February 2023. The election was contested and the candidates received the following votes. Number one, Kerry Stephen of Party A received 1,281 votes. Musa Abdul of ADC received 711 votes. Al Makura Tanko Umaru of APC received 76,813 votes. Odela Bawa Elari got 9,988 votes. Abdullah Musa Agwe of NNPP got 3,640 votes. Idris Musa Alim of NRM got 190 votes. Onao Muhammad Ogoshi of PDP got 93,064 votes. Alu Ademumu Azu of SDP got 13,642 votes. And finally, Olga Kletus of Z the ZLP got 2,863 votes. That Onao Muhammad Ogoshe of PDP, having satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner for the 2023 Sampara West Senatorial District election held on the 25th day of February 2023. The election was contested. The candidate received the following votes. One, Mohammed Bedo of AA Party. 65 votes. Two, Ibrahim Musa Anka of the ADC scored a total of 150 votes. Three, Suleiman Nawali of the ADP scored a total of 239 votes. Four, Bubakar Gaziz Yari of the APC scored a total of 147,346 votes. Allah. Salem Nazibu of the APGA scored a total of 258 votes. Ahmad Lawali of the APP score a total of 75 votes. Aliyu Yahaya of the Labour Party scored a total of 111 votes. Adamu Abdul Malik of the NNPP scored a total of 363 votes. Sakin Fagom Muhammad Bello of the PDP scored a total of 58,832 votes. Umar Muhammad Gumi of the Social Democratic Party 
scored a total of 62 votes. Aliyu Ibrahim of the YPP scored a total of 85 votes. That Abu Bakar Abdulaziz Yari of the APC, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Allah. 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 Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Oh, well, it's um, <laughs> right now, it's actually a uh, date. Day three, yes, of uh, Nigeria Decides 2023, we're done with the election process. Uh, the coalition process is still ongoing, and a lot of people are actually saying or assuming that this coalition, before we actually get to hear the final uh, results, might flow until tomorrow. Uh, do, you, do you think this will actually happen? I, I, I think so. You think so? Yeah, I think so. So, uh, you know, today was supposed to be the last day, but, you know... Uh, it's it very unlikely like, yeah. that all the results will come in uh, between now and midnight. I hmm. doubt it. Hmm. Yeah. Because today, uh, I think the uh, first Sokoe actually said that... Uh, how many states are we expecting today? Eight states, I think. Seven only? to eight states, yes. Yeah, and you know yesterday was only a kitty that was taken, yeah, which means exactly. that there's still a long way to go. Wow. <laughs> and you know, as you can see, some states are still just announcing. And after announcing in the states, mm. that's when they start heading to Abuja before, you know, they bring the results and announce at the collation center. Yes, Thank indeed. you for staying <laughs> tuned to Nigeria Decides. Today, as Husina said, is the three and collation of results are ongoing. Uh, my name is Stella Iaji. All right, I'm Dasha and Hussein Ausman, and thank you so much for uh, staying tuned to us uh, with us on uh, Nigeria Decides this beautiful afternoon. Well, uh, so far, the process, what do you think about the process? Because uh, yesterday I remember asking, you know, what the possibility of a rancor would be. And today we're seeing Dino Melaye, you know, uh, getting angry and you know heating up the whole coalition center <laughs> and i actually had the INEC chairman uh, telling him that he was actually becoming disruptive mm. you know because yeah. he got up a couple of times exactly you know? exactly mm. what do you think about the whole process so far do you think it's been free and fair so far so far i think the process has been free and well i think the process has been going on well mm. and one thing i really like is the results that are coming in you know in the past i remember there were times when we have had elections in this country where a state will just sweep the entire thing. You hear they have 40 local governments here and one particular party will just win 40 or 39. But that's not what we've seen. In results that have come in so far, you actually see a spread. You see everybody taking yeah. a little out of the basket, you know. You have every party getting something out of the the basket so yeah, i think yeah. it's 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 good for our democracy all right so uh at the moment we actually have our reporter shafi usuleiman on standby at uh, the coalition center inet coalition center the icc in abuja uh hello shafi U. good afternoon shafi U, can you hear me okay i think we lost him there so sorry for cutting you short yeah, so I think so far, I, I like it, uh, just speaking from my own perspective, the fact that all the parties seem to, to be getting something, it's, that shows some level of fairness, that shows some level of uh, credibility, if you ask me, because if in uh, a particular state you see the front runners getting, everybody's getting something, mm -hmm. and then I don't know how maybe you come out later to say that... Uh, you were read out or something because you know you know yeah talking about the front vote. runners right uh, a lot of them a lot of the candidates actually won in states that you know a lot of people never expected mm. a so, lot of people never expected and it's it, it, like you said it seems like it's a spread yeah. and it's not just concentrated in one particular region and all that for example now uh plateau state mm. would have thought well as you know plateau state it's predominantly uh, used to be predominantly uh, PDP mm -hmm. in the last election they went to the PDP so um, the fact that they went to Labour Party is not too shocking to me because okay. I mean most of the uh, states that have been won so far or where the Labour Party is having yeah, so, so even though we're actually still awaiting, awaiting the, official the official results, results but what, what official, correspondents yeah. Have, yeah. have filed based mm -hmm. on what have been an, uh, has been announced is that the Labour Party is having a very good outing in that state. And, you know, most okay. of the people so, voting so the Labour Party now used to be PDP. Hmm. How about Lagos? Did you expect 
that uh, a Labour Party would take I, the I, I, Well, before now, because of what uh, uh, we saw on social media and everywhere, I knew that uh, Labour Party was going to have a good showing in Lagos, but I didn't know it was going to be this much. All right, well, let's uh, go ahead and reconnect with our reporter, Shafi Usuleiman at the ICC. Hello, Shafi. Can you give us an update of uh, what is actually, or how it went down, or what's happening at the moment at the INET Coalition Centre? Okay, uh, right now uh, we are at the uh, Coalition Center, that is the International Conference Center, uh, and of course uh, proceedings resume uh, this afternoon uh, for the exercise after it was suspended yesterday. Um, right now the uh, Chief College, the, the Chief Returning Officer, the Chief Returning Officer who is also the INIC Chairman, Professor uh, Mahmoud Yakubu has mm -hmm. received additional oh, um. <laughs> results, you know, from three states. Uh, uh, you know, we had AKT yesterday, but today we also have the results from Kwara, Oshun, and Ondo. But in the process of the presentation, especially that of uh, the result of Kwara State, uh, there were a lot of observations uh, from political party agents. Uh, who discover, you know, according to them, some discrepancies uh, in the figures that were presented by the returning officers from the state. Um, they sought to find out why there were this, uh, those uh, discrepancies, uh, you know, from the chief returning officer who also directed uh, the INEC returning officer from the state uh, to explain why. Uh, but this has generated a lot of uh, controversy among you know, especially the party agents who are here, uh, who insisted that um, a certain procedure has to be adopted in line with the Electoral Act uh, requirements, uh, that whoever is presenting his result, uh, that is coming from the states, um, uh, the INEC uh, should also ensure that uh, that result is um, beamed, you know, uh, on the screen, which is behind the INEC uh, uh, chairman, uh, who is the uh, returning officer for the presidential election. Um, this has, uh, you know, generated uh, controversies okay, and back and forth. Uh, but in the end, the chief returning officer uh, did mention that they would resolve this matter after uh, the resume proceeding, uh, which is suspended for one hour. Um, on the sideline of the presentation or the, the coalition, uh, a team, if you like, or the group of uh, party agents, uh, I mean, largely represented or, I mean, being led by the PDP agent, uh, Senator Dino Melaye, uh, converge and agree that um, uh, henceforth, if their demands are not met, that is um, ensuring that whatever is being presented by the returning officers from the state is being live and, of course, is showing uh, on the screen uh, for them to see the original result from the polling units, uh, they would not allow the process to continue. Uh, so it remains to be seen what will happen, you know, when the resume uh, coalition commences. Right, thank you, Sheffield. They will uh, keep up with you uh, as uh, events unfold. So now joining us to discuss uh, the issue so far is our in-house analyst, Mr. Kendi Amodu. Thank you, thank you for joining us thank this you, beautiful brother. afternoon. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kendi, you've seen some of the results. I mean, just on the, um, on the slide there, we saw that of Oshun State. No, that of Ondo State. Yes. What do you make of that? Not too surprising. I think... Um, things uh, continue to follow some trends. There have been some surprises, yes. Uh, but I think as the day goes on, um, these initial results will put in perspective the, the real change that has happened uh, in, the voter, um, in the voters' mentality. There seems to be this real desire for a change in leadership, a change in governance, and that is being reflected. So while we're having the traditional um, strongholds holding, mm. 
there are also some incursions into those traditional Strong. strongholds mm -hmm. that will show that, that somewhat there's a change that is happening. Are those part of the surprises you're talking about? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, well, what we don't, we don't have the national uh, figures up now, so we can't really speculate based on the figures that have been released by the states. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the figures, the National Assembly, um, candidates that have emerged, you see that there have been some surprises. Mm. You see oh. that there have been surprises in uh, Benue. You see that there have been some surprises in people that came back. And then some traditional strongholds have held. For, uh, for instance, the former APC national chairman, that's Adam Oshomole, mm. won his senatorial seat. Wow. So we're seeing, <laughs> we're seeing a mix. Yes. Mm -hmm. You understand? The strongholds are holding but then when you say the strongholds are holding where well, we have reports and we have seen results where uh, VIPs lost their polling units yes and uh, uh, no, you no, know no. Uh, VIPs uh, traditionally yes. Yes, but, <laughs> so you know that but before that's now some as long as uh, you are governor so in some instances they always want their polling units you know not necessarily in some for instances for instance you, president obasanjo has lost his polling unit the polling unit in front of his house has lost his polling unit since 1999. Mm. So it's not a surprise if he loses his polling unit. You understand? Mm. Uh, the, the former vice president, uh, Atiku Abubakar, used to lo um, lose in Yola. Mm. You understand? Mm. But when the results from um, the remote areas come in, the rural areas come in, then you see the... That's why I say what we have now mm. uh, uh, the results that are coming later will show us the changes that you give a, it to give a clearer picture. We'll give of a clearer how, picture of yes, the changes but, that have happened. But the initial picture we are seeing now is that there is some change, mm. and it shows that there is a change in the mentality of Nigerians. They are not follow, they are not following uh, personalities anymore. They they have a real desire for good governance. Okay, let's talk about Oshun State. Oshun State, just before a couple of months ago, was called the APC state because it was an APC state because the governor at the time was APC. He left office not too long ago and then somebody from the PDP won. And now in this presidential election, the PDP won. Well, it's not surprising. Oshun mm. has had its problems. Mm. There have been the, the, EPC, the APC imploded before the governorship elections in Oshun. There are so many factions. And, and if you look at the Ocean, uh, Ocean State elections, even from the election before this, four years ago, you see that, um, I, I think four years ago, um, the one that Oyetola won, you understand? You had, secretary, you had a secretary to the state government that stepped out of the party and run, ran on ADC. You had SDP showing a strong... So, uh, Ocean State, the voters in Ocean State have this multi-party mentality mm. and so it's not surprising now that uh, PDP made a strong showing in Oshutin and don't forget the wife of uh, 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 the uh, PDP presidential candidate is mm. from Osho State. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Kende, uh, earlier you actually talked about, you know, the states releasing uh, figures and not, you know, INEC itself. And we've actually had a lot of people uh, complain, saying that they're not, uh, uh, they don't have faith in the process right now. So, do you think there will be um, a situation where the numbers of figures that the states release and that the one that INEC releases, you know, doesn't tally. I, I, I don't see. I really don't see. Because it's process by process. The states have to release their figures because we, we, the whole election, the collation of results, the whole release of the results has been overshadowed by the presidential election. Mm. And everybody has forgotten that the mm. Senate and the House of Representatives also had their, uh, their elections. Mm. And you're not going to release Senate and uh, House of Representatives figures in Abuja. You release it in the states. So as the states collate, mm. if the states are collating, it is incumbent on them to release the results in the states. 
And if that is going to happen, I don't see there being any conflicting well, results. Well, Candid, it's possible there may be no conflicting results with the, uh, with the one that they bring to Abuja. But for instance, in KB, we had a report where there were discrepancies in the figures uh, that a particular officer brought to the collision center. And that officer was sent back to put his act together. That's the danger. And that's why a lot of people are very disappointed that the IREC didn't mm. work. That's the um, electronic transmission of results from, it's supposed, the results were supposed to be transmitted electronically, electronically yeah. so that there would be no, you know, space. These discrepancies to, will not no, come there, up at all. There will be no space for manipulating results. But you also have to understand that the human factor comes in. Some of them honest mistakes, some of them not so honest mistakes. Mm. Mm. All right, uh, talking about uh, upsets, uh, we're looking at what happened in Lagos. Did you emphasize the result that came out of Lagos? Did you think that Labour Party was it's going to have official. that kind of showing? It's Why not? <laughs> Lagos is the center. Let, 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 let's, let's be honest. Um, Lagos is the center of... Um, it's not, let me put it this way. Lagos is not a civil service state. Mm. It's a center of people ha that have independent ideas. Mm. It's like the capital of what's up, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm. The capital of what's up. <laughs> <laughs> the capital the of what's up. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, the young and the viral, mm. yeah. those that are making the young people that are uh, making money. The elites as well. The elites as well. They're there. And so, you know, you don't... Independent-minded people, that's where I wanted to go. You understand? Mm -hmm. People that have the capacity to make their own decisions. And it's a potpourri of different... Mm -hmm. So, people, the young people in Nigeria say they want a change. And it's not about personalities. They say they want a younger president. Mm. And that's where we are going because most of the people that voted in Lagos are young, independent minded people who want to see that change. And it's happening in Abuja here mm. too. Mm. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, the technology, you know, uh, talking about the IREP and also the beavers. A lot mm. of people actually complained during the election process that the, some beavers uh, were not uh, working or well ma malfunctioning. And then, you know, talking about the IREP now, you know, it's becoming uh, rather stressful because uh, some are actually saying that... Um, uh, for it not to be working at that at this moment uh, it seems that uh, there's some kind of foul play and considering the results in equity state that came out yesterday there were lots of uh, people coming out to say that according to the timing of the results that was uh, uploaded it said uh february 20 february 20th and not february 25th so uh there's kind of like a confusion there no we we are voting in elections and we we're trying to take the elections out of the nigerian context i think malam hamza was here uh, we were discussing like yesterday mm. and he was saying that we've quite forgotten the p peculiar problems that nigeria is facing like the the network problems like the um, electricity problems and of course the technology problems and then the human factor. But shouldn't they have foreseen these issues before You can't now? foresee every, every operation. Let's take it out of elections. Every operation has logistic problems. That is the ideal that you plan towards. And mm. then there is what happens. And there are also... Which is the reality. And there are also some people who say that the beavers, this is the first time they're actually using it yeah. for election across, across the, country. the country. The first test was just in one state. So it, it wasn't possible to see that so all that of this could come So that if there were problems, up. you could easily run around mm. and, you know, substitute the beavers uh, machines and uh, then, you know, cover up. But this one is across the 36 mm. states. And so those problems will arise. It's, it's dangerous uh, for us to try and impugn the credibility of the elections. Mm. 
because everybody loses. Mm. If there is going, if there is a cancellation of elections today, then we go back to, you know, z zero base and we start all over again. Mm. Uh, Kendi, there's something I want to talk about. You know, you talked about young people want, wanting a younger person. Yes. Yes. But uh, there are some persons that say that this movement could cause a bad wagon effect. You know, for instance, I, uh, some of our reporters who were in, on the streets on 25th said, for a particular party, people will just come and say, where's the logo of this party? And then they turn printed, irrespective of who was Top standing. Top to bottom. <laughs> yes, irrespective of the candidate. Yes, uh, so what that's if, why I So say. what if that candidate uh, was not going to be any better than the people that they were that's running the, from? That's the problem. That's the problem. This election, the campaigns have been the most virulent campaigns we've had in years. And people have not concentrated on the issues. What they've done is throw brickbats at each other. And then, you know, and the followers have not helped matters. We have not interrogated what everybody is bringing to the table. Mm. And we have let them get away with it. We've let the candidates get away with the fact that they have not presented programs to us. Okay, this is your program. Let's interrogate your program. Will it work? Because it's one thing for you to say, we'll make light work. Exactly. How do you do that? Mm. Uh, we will we'll give uh, all Nigerians a salary. We will increase risk. the minimum wage. We will increase the minimum <laughs> and, wage. And then you don't explain how you're going to achieve that, putting into consideration the current financial situation of the country. Yes. You know? So we've let, we let the candidates get away with just turning Nigerians against themselves instead of campaigning and telling us what they want to do. Mm. You understand? So the bandwagon is real. Mm. Okay, well, let's talk about, you know, uh, the coalition center. You know, we've actually been watching live, you know, uh, what has been happening at the coalition center. Talking about the uh, INEC coalition center here in the ICC yes, in Abuja. The drama. What do you think about, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Melai's outburst? You know, it just reminds me of what happened in uh, 2015. 2015. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the truth about it is. You know, the, the politicians, they have the figures. You understand? What we are doing here, they have the figures already. The real figures? The because, real I mean, figures. there are cooked figures all over the place as no, well. No, there are you know? cooked figures, mm -hmm. but they have the figures. So those that know they are losing, know they are losing. Let me just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, okay, so still talking about the coalition, we've actually, you know, linked up with some of these states and we've seen that some of the returning officers don't even have an idea or are not familiar with the process, you know, of the coalition. That we've seen a lot of them, you know, being asked to step down and come back when they have the right figures and, you know, uh, all other uh, challenges that have actually come with that. So what do you think about that? I think it's sad. It means that we moved on from 2011. Maybe we've made some improvements. I, I covered the elections that brought Rocha Sokorucha into power in 2011. Okay. And this same problem, this same problem we're talking about, was, it was replicated from there. Let me say something like that. People that don't know. In fact, there was, um, there was a returning officer that came and disappeared. <laughs> he came, presented, and they said, step down. We're and going for a break. Back. Then when we come back, we'll take mm. your mm. results. And he was never taken again. I remember there was this particular returning officer who couldn't read his own results. Yes. I, I remember very well. Yes. Much. So we, we were back there, which is why it is a pity that we were saying, there's, that INEC was saying there's going to be electronic transmission of results and we're not having that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we are now leaving the process and up going back to, human, to, we mm -hmm. yeah. to the human factor, the human errors and everything. And like I said earlier, some of them are honest mistakes. Some of them not so honest. Yeah, but also the de de delay in the results. Isn't it uh, worrisome? Because, yes, I know the uh, election had to continue yesterday in some areas, but uh, it wasn't a lot of places. So shouldn't we have had more results at this time? No, I, I guess what INEC did was it, look at the, it looked at the results it had as at last night. And it realized that they couldn't... It, 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 there are two choices to make. Mm. It's either uh, we keep on waiting and then the results will trickle in. And then based on that, maybe 
you keep on announcing results on the 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and then continue throughout today, mm. or you come back, ensure that there are more results that have come in, and then you do them in... No, from what the INEC chairman said yesterday evening, it was obvious that it was only equity that was yes. ready. But and what, that's the, my question. Why is it that only one result was ready at that time? Why, that was why, over. Why, why didn't we have FCT? Exactly. I mean, that too. you understand? You know, so, looking at the proximity. Yes. Why didn't we have Kogi State ready? Mm. So, so I we're saying about this is the same the reason thing. Why a lot of people, if you go online right now, are saying, "How is it that we don't have the FCT? We don't have states that are close to the FCT." But then Kogi all the way. I know, but you know that there are some polling units in the FCT that continued uh, voting yesterday yesterday mm, so yeah. we couldn't have it so do we see a delay you know in this process yes i'm seeing a delay because um um in 2019 we went into tuesday yes tomorrow is tuesday but at this time we have just very few <laughs> so <laughs> no, no, it looks no. like we may you go into see, wednesday you will see that you will see that it will pick up okay it will pick up today and then by tomorrow by midday tomorrow we'll know there will there'll just be a few states, and then whoever is there will now decide whether he wants to call and congratulate. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and so for the that. sake of uh, you know those who are watching and actually have no idea, we've actually seen a lot of people saying, ah, they're scared, you uh, know, uh, the North is not saying anything, what if they come out with so-so-so result and all that. But what does the Electoral Act say about, you know, uh, the candidates who would be declared winner? What the Electoral Act says is, first, simple majority. Second, you must have 25% uh, in 24 states, in 24 the states and, the FCT. and the FCT. So that is what will determine hmm. what the results are. I, because I, most of them actually feel that the North will be the determinant factor on who wins. Yes, because of the way results are being released now. Mm. We are going through, we've gone through the Southwest, mm. you understand? I think in the, very, very, the Southeast will follow very quickly. The reason why they say the North is, uh, will determine is because of the numbers. The numbers of uh, voters. Because, because you have a Bono, you have a Kano, you have Katsina. You know, these are... States you have Kano. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> not number yes. of electorates, but number of states. Is the number of the number of the electorate, okay. which is embedded in the states. Mm. There are some states that, once the election comes from the state, it will cancel out maybe an entire region. an entire region. region. Yes. Yeah. One state. Now we have states that have twenty-four local governments. We have states that have forty-four local governments. Mm. So. Well, uh, Kendi, uh, so far with the results that you have seen, isn't it like a bit different from the past? Because like in every state, you actually see the results trickling down. Like everybody yes. is getting a little something. Everybody. You, know? you understand? And that's why I said the, that mentality has changed. Yeah. Nobody is, we're not doing, oh, uh, oh your state is for APC yeah. now. Or your state is for, you understand? You see each and every political party. And, and, and the truth about it is uh, the APC and PDP are actually struggling because you have, you have newcomers like NMPP that have swept away exactly. some, some and Labour Party. And Labour Party. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Labour Party has <laughs> done a number. Yes, it on, has. On, it has done a number. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I, 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 and and, and uh, quite honestly, I see, I see the Labour Party being a very close contender. And uh, if they don't win this time around and they keep the momentum on, they can do something very, very different in four years' time. But, but I'm not ruling them out now. Because and for a party not. that is, this is the first time they have come this far. Yes. And they're doing this, and they're having this kind of showing. Because they had the right candidate this time around. Well, uh, Mr. That Kenji. had appeal. <laughs> <laughs> that had appeal. I guess we'll leave that to a lot of other Nigerians <laughs> to just to decide. <laughs> All right, well, um, I think okay. uh, right now we'll actually take a quick breather, and when we return, we will definitely continue Nigeria Decides 2023.
All right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us on Nigeria Decides 2023. Now, before we went on that break, we actually had a lot to discuss, but we still have more to discuss, even as the coalition process across the 36 states and the federal capital territory continues. Uh, I'm not uh, alone in the studio. I have my co-anchor Stella and uh, we also have, we still have Mr. Kende Amodu, our in-house analyst, you know, still with us, you know, to discuss <laughs> on this uh mr kende thank you so much for staying with us oh, thank you. all right so now um the election process has actually come and gone right and uh it came with a lot of challenges definitely earlier i was watching the commissioner of police uh, in river state you know warning residents not to protest because there are lots of accusations you know on wiki 
when the election process was actually going on uh, that was uh, on day one now the commission of police was actually uh, you know uh warning residents not to protest saying that you know anyone that comes out to cause trouble will be dealt this dealt with decisively and all that so now we're seeing the coalition process going on and then we're still seeing uh some people throwing a tantrum even in the coalition center in abuja now who's uh Whose whose duty is it? Whose duty is it, or what should we be doing to make sure that it doesn't escalate beyond you know uh, this what we're seeing right now? Well, th this period of time is probably the most uh, dangerous period of time um, during the elections. The period of waiting for results to come, because this is when the fake news merchants mm. will go to town, mm. and you will hear all sorts of things. So, um, there's a national orientation agency that should have been empowered to, at this point in time, start sending messages to diffuse the tension, to remind people that Nigeria still belongs to all of us, and that no matter what, there are still legal redresses to any um, irregularities that might occur. And that's the important messages that the media itself has to pass now. Mm. The media cannot afford to be partisan at this period in time because it is, this is a very crucial period. Well, uh, Kende, why do you think Nigerians, some Nigerians are like this though? I've seen some people on social media where their party won or their candidate won, they, they will hail INEC. So, so INEC did very well, mm. credible elections in this place. And anywhere they lose, they, they start attacking INEC. They allege rigging. Thank and why, why is that so? Because uh, somebody must win and another person must lose, right? Yeah, well, the stakes, the stakes were raised unnecessarily high going into the elections. There are people that are saying that if you don't vote for this particular candidate, you don't like Nigeria. There are people that are saying this is our turn. There are people that are saying uh, we are here to recover and we, don't, uh, we are going to win by all means. <laughs> it's, the, it's the spirit of the Nigerian. You know, way back we had leaders say this, that this election is a do or die mm -hmm. affair. You yeah. know, all these things. It's rhetoric. But unfortunately, the leaders do the rhetoric. The leaders follow, uh, the followers follow through. So the person who is the leader might say, like, like the, what was happening in the International Conference Center just mm. a few minutes mm. ago, mm. just to put pressure on INEC to do what they want. But that was that seen actually necessary. But do they, can they really arm twist INEC? I mean, no matter... They the, cannot. They cannot, no. You understand? Which is why you saw that uh, after he had thrown his tantrum, mm. the INEC uh, chairman continued with the business of mm. the day. You can't. At this point in time, everything, like uh, our people say, the yam and the knife mm. is in the, <laughs> and, you know, and he, the INEC chairman must um, present a picture of being unruffled and unintimidated at this period in time, because that is what referees do. Okay, th okay, yeah, I was actually about to ask that what he's actually doing at this time, is it the job of the party agents in the polling units? Uh, well, it, Trying it, to defend the votes and all that. It, well, the, 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 the votes have left. Mm -hmm. the, the, the polling units at the regional, at the rural, at the regional centre mm -hmm. has come to the centre. And he says it's the agents for the party mm. at the National Coalition Centre. Mm. So, yes, uh, Dino Malai is doing his job, but there is a way you do the job, that you don't set the whole process uh, in this array. Mm. And I want to believe that every other party has an agent there. An agent there that could know. make the same noise, and then if they did, the whole place would be set <laughs> in this array. And the coalition may just be stalled yes. for how long? You know, so. Okay, now, uh, still talking about these party agents, how important are they in the electoral process? They are there to ensure, protect the, you know, it's part of ensuring that the elections are free and fair. They are there to protect the interests of their party, mm. protect the interests of their party 
in, point out the irregularities that may, that may have gone against their parties. But, you know, um, it's like uh, the people say that if you point one finger, four, four fingers are pointing back at you. If you, are, if you are accusing the high neck of irregularities in one part of the country, then what about the other part of the country where you are good? You are, you are showing where you are you doing well. Gone, you know? mm. Do you understand? Is it that there are no irregularities there too? Because I've seen a lot of that, especially on social media. People are healing INEC for good performance in a particular place where they, their party won. And won. then they're attacking INEC, alleging all sorts. Uh, uh, you know, but like I said earlier, you see, you see um, some, of the people, some of the people in the coalition center today are, came there with a preconceived notion that this thing must go our way. And that is what they are, that's the script they are working towards. Uh, why do you think they come with that preconceived notion? Is it because of maybe the fake, the, the results that they may have seen, which does not necessarily reflect a true picture of things, or, or they just think that they can arm twist Einek? Is that. Hey, things go in different. It, 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 the answer to that qu question is multifaceted. There are, there, there, are some, there are some politicians that already know they have lost out. Mm. Yet they'll still come yes, there and make trouble. Yes, they will come there trouble. and make trouble. Mm -hmm. You understand? Hoping to achieve what it's exactly. It's hoping exactly. to change the... To, to, <laughs> to, to change, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but there are, there, are, there are some. That's not, to, that's not to say that there are not some genuine agitations. Mm. Which if the INEC chairman hears out will be able to say. But you see, you can't cancel. You see, that's the point. You can't cancel election in places where you didn't do well. Just because you didn't do well? Just because you didn't do well. If you didn't do well there, or there are, you know, what he's talking about is that they should, um, the, the figures should be um, displayed. So figures uh, displayed Power of, power of word, power of, uh, polling unit, and everything, so that when the returning officer is going through his presentation, the um, agents are also seeing what is mm. happening on the board. Mm. It might be a legitimate re a request, mm. but has he taken into consideration the logistics there? Mm. Is there logistics for that to happen for each? And are we going to go through each word and, you know, and then contest and approve? That should have been done. I think during the planning yeah. for the entire process. No, maybe even vetoing the, right? re veto the result. If a returning officer is bringing a result to the center, all party agents at the state have signed off on that report. So you can't go back. You can't turn back the clock and say that, um, results that had already been signed off in the states, you now want to go through them each individually. Okay, now we have a lot of uh, Labour Party supporters and candidates, you know, uh, accusing INEC of being partial, saying that some of the results that were reflected is not a true reflection of what actually happened or what they actually got from some of these uh, Where's states. the proof? Yes, okay, exactly. I was going to ask that. You know, so, the thing about <laughs> it is that if you have proof, the collation here is not the end of the matter. The courts. The courts are there. And if you have proof, Ocean State is a very good example in which the court, uh, the lower court mm. for now, has upturned the election and said because of overvoting in some regions, mm. they uh, um, were cancelling the results in these polling units. And so because of that, the results have changed and the, f the former governor is the one that has been declared Winner. the winner of that election. So they are the courts. And I think with the help of the beavers also, yes. most of the concerns will be taken care of, right? Yes, they will. Because for, uh, for the first time, you have an electronic rendition of every of those that were accredited to vote. Mm. And so numbers must not go over those that are accredited to vote. Mm. 
Okay, so we're seeing so many numbers, different figures online. You know, what can actually be done to curb, you know, any form of disinformation or misinformation? Really nothing. Figures, yeah. Really nothing. <laughs> and we had it. We had it everywhere. Even the in the U.S. elections, the former president was saying he won the election based on figures that his team collated too. So in the final analysis, you see, but. Uh, by law, the body that is in charge of releasing the final result is INEC. So all those figures might titillate our fancies for now. But it's the figure that INEC... So, okay, why isn't anybody uh, uh, challenging the, the results of Lagos in which the Labour Party won? Exactly. Isn't that funny? Exactly, that's what I was talking about. Some people challenge where they haven't won, and then where they have won, they, they, hail, they, they hail INEC. So, you know, uh, as early as last night, Labour Party supporters had already started challenging results that they were having. But so, suddenly they are silent when the Labour Party won in Lagos. Mm. And it's for all the parties. Mm. And it's this idea that every party wants to get ahead by just making noise and not going by what has been recorded you know there's no verification everybody just goes it's funny <laughs> <laughs> all right while we're on that let's take a track up from the collation center where the agent of the pdp had uh, some concerns um i raised the issue of the fact that in accordance with the provision of the electoral act um section 60 and section 64 um, four of um, the Electoral Act 2002 has amended that there will be transmission of results from the polling units. And the INEC chairman and Festus Zokoye have repeatedly told Nigerians that there will be transmission of, of, of results from polling units directly to the server. And we found out that this has not been done. INEC failed in this regard. And when this issue was, when I raised this issue today, supported by other party agents, the results party agents. Anyway, we, um, I raised the issue of the fact that, in accordance with the provision of the Electoral Act, um, Section 60 and Section 64, um, four of um, the Electoral Act 2002 has amended that. There will be transmission of results from the polling units. And the INEC chairman and Festus Okoye have repeatedly told Nigerians that there will be transmission of, of, of results from polling units directly to the server. And we found out that this has not been done. INEC failed in this regard. And when this issue was, when I raised this issue today, supported by other party agents, the national chairman of INEC evaded, um, vehemently evaded that because what section 47 Three, emphasize is that wherever um, the, the card reader or the beavers fail, if they cannot get a replacement, election should be cancelled in those areas. And we have seen for the presentation of the um, results from um, Ekiti yesterday that some places were cancelled as a result of bypassing um, beavers. So the only way to detect that beavers have been bypassed is for us to see the uploaded results. And we insisted that the chairman should show us here now the uploaded results state by state, just like the way they are displaying the collated results they are presenting. And that is the only way to test the veracity and authenticity of these results. If not, we are only here to endorse the fraud that has been done from the unit to the world to the state. We are not here to rubber stamp infractions. We are not here to rubber stamp the uh, abnormalities that have been done. We are here to check them. But the, the, the national chairman of INEC is not giving us opportunity to, 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 to question what they are doing. He's saying that all has been done, meaning we are just here to rubber stamp. And we are going to prove that we are not here to rubber stamp. We have no other country to call our home but this country. We are going to do everything humanly possible to make sure that the right thing must be done. What exactly are you going to do now, you and the other political party? We, 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 we have just met now, and we are going to make a presentation by the time we resume. And if they insist that they are not going to respond to us, then you will see the action we will take. But we want to tell you, we, but we want to tell you that we will not allow, having suffered 
a pain in this country, having suffered poverty, hunger, kidnapping, killings, we will not allow a continuation of failure. We must make sure that the right thing is done. And national chairman is putting his integrity on test. We are putting his integrity on test. Nigerians are watching. The world is watching. Even the dead are watching to see what INEC will do. But the battle to make sure that only resu authentic results will be will be announced here today is the battle of no retreat, no surrender. <laughs> All right, uh, that's a clip from uh, the agent of the PDP, Mr. Dino Milai, talking about the uploading of the results. Now, uh, Kendi, yes, um, the, uh, the electoral access that or, uh, said that they were going to upload the results into um, the, servers. the servers and all of that. And if for whatever reason there's a technical hitch and that is not done, does that in any way affect the credibility of the process? It doesn't. It doesn't. What about transparency? For transparency's sake, if you do... If, see, I'm, the process doesn't just end here. The process started from, like he said, the polling units, to the wards, to the local government, to the states. You understand? And each process has been followed by different party agents until they got to the, to the state. Mm -hmm. Even at the state collation centers, where these figures were collated, every party had a representative of... And they signed. And they signed. So if there is a technical hitch, if there is a technical hitch, and in the electronic transmission of results. Mm. And you know, the funny thing about it is that INEC had pre-armed them with this because INEC had apologized that you would not be able to upload electronically because there was a glitch in the system. So, do we cancel the entire, do we cancel the entire election because there is this glitch in the system or do we go ahead? I think the INEC chairman has decided, let's go ahead. Mm. So, it, you know, and like I said earlier, this militant language mm -hmm. is totally mm -hmm. unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Yes, you say that you, they have met and they have said, oh, this is our reservation concern. It's on record. But he is saying that, that they will see what we will do mm which sets the, the tone. It sounds like a threat. You know, mm. to, a, to the threat level. Mm. So if, if by the time they resume, they don't allow them to get into the collation center or something, because security must be, then it turns out to be the INEC chairman is preventing democracy from coming to pass. Mm. Okay, so now uh, there was something uh, Mr. Dino actually said. He talked about uh, what happened in Ekiti State where results were cancelled for bypassing beavers. Now, when you bypass beavers, it's uh, intentional, it, right? No, it's not intentional. Okay. Either the beavers machines failed. Failed. So okay, but but we actually we've actually had reports, you know, from people who actually said uh, some of the results, uh, some of the INEC officials failed or refused to upload the results to the Beavers. How? The the Beavers is an accreditation system, you understand, which which determines the number of people that are in that, that are accredited voters that showed up. Mm. So when you come, you go with your PVC. Mm. You understand? And your PVC and your biometrics capture you, capture you mm. and register that you came for this election. Mm. You understand? And then you cast your votes. Mm. And then when you cast your votes, the elections are whatever. And then it is sent. Now, what the, Be the Beavers records hold there is that this number of people voted. So if you go to the national and they are collating results, and the Beavers have said, this is the number of people that voted. And they say, uh, this number of people could not be accredited by Beavers, but they voted. They invalidate those votes mm. because they are not captured by the Beavers accreditation. Okay, now still talking about INEC officials, do you think uh, that uh, uh, 
some of the INEC officials, because we actually heard stories of uh, some INEC officials uh, relegating and leaving their duty posts, especially ad hoc staff, uh, core members who were scared of, uh, you know, violence in their polling units. Do you think uh, such ad hoc staff should actually be interrogated? Well, I, it depends on what the circumstances are and then the veracity of the stories. Mm. Mm. Because there are so many stories on social media. That's true. There are so many stories. There are stories that they said um, uh, INEC officials were thumb printing. Thumb printing. <laughs> you understand? I'm, I'm, I actually have and a question I, I, like I'm that. I'm so puzzled. <laughs> you know, because, you know, I'm trying to wrap my, my head around it that, okay, they are thumb printing. So are you saying that those thumb prints uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> accredited. Yeah, exactly. Without the accreditation. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, I'm still trying mm. to wrap my head around it. <laughs> there is there's some, some logical explanation. Because that, that, that kind of allegation, it reminds us of those days. Yes. You know, past elections where we didn't have all the technological no security measures. Mm. All those things were not there. There are the no time. measures to check that. But I think we've gone a long way from there. From, from those years to now. But we still have those, rep uh, the, those, those reports that they locked themselves in and they were thumb printing. So thumb printing. In fact, there was, a, there was, <laughs> there was a, a, a video online yesterday in which they saw some, they, you saw some people sitting in the room and, and they are thumb printing. And then when you do the check, you know, you find out that's an old video. Yeah. Mm. All right, can they, um, you know, for these elections, when we observe delay in st uh, the starting the process in some areas, we also found out that there were some people who were unable to identify their polling units on time. Now, all of this have happened now. Do we see um, uh, an improvement in the governorship elections, considering that all of these hiccups have been noticed at this point? Yes. Yes, we see. Which is, uh, it's strange because there are mock beavers uh, trials across the states before this. And some of these, some of these um, mistakes should have been noticed then. They, you know, it's like we're using the presidential and national assembly elections to experiment how well the system will work. Uh, that's why there's a lot of complaints. But I think that the elections going forward will be better. Those that were not able to quickly um, identify their polling units, at least know where their polling units are now. What I'm worried about is the logistics. How will INEC be able to fix that logistic problem so that everybody starts voting at the same time? Oh, wow. If not at the same time, there's no discrepancy of some people vote, starting to vote at noon some people started voting at 1 p.m. You know, and so th that gives the room to all these speculations. Even if there is nothing uh, going on, there are all these speculations that, oh, they don't want us to vote, oh, we must vote, and all. And there are a lot of people that are invested in this year's election. Mm. So, you, you, so it's not strange that you see people being agitated when uh, INEC officials or materials didn't reach their polling units on time. You know, one of the reasons that they gave was the fact that there were some terrains that were easy to go to by the INEC officials, you know, and then some were more difficult. Now, how, will, how easy will it be to manipulate those areas that are difficult? And you, you see, another problem, an expert talked in a report that was carried in the Daily Trust that Okay, ordinarily, maybe INEC could have been able to take these materials a day before yes. or two days before. But then, knowing some politicians and the way they behave, who's, who is to say that they will not send people to go cut away the materials or, you know, before the elections? Uh, well, be before, you know, what INEC would do, that was in those years, would, uh, would get a trusted place where all the sensitive... Uh, the non-sensitive non material will be kept. Then the sensitive materials will join them on the day of election. But, you know, I think they revised their logistic arrangements and they're bringing everything at the same time. Uh, the, I, the, 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 the excuse about 
terrain doesn't just work out because if you in in the FCT, you understand there are no terrains that there are no terrains that are really that remote. If um, a, the polling unit next to my house didn't start voting until 1 p.m., mm. then there's no, that excuse doesn't hold water. And that's one of the that's one of the polling units that vote, uh, that. Uh, voting continued until 10 p.m. in the night because they didn't come early. And if you see the enthusiasm of people in that area, they provided the table, provided the chair, mm, and provided nice. the lighting <laughs> when night some came. Some people cooked food. Uh, yes, for the some officials. cooked because they wanted to vote. Mm. All right. So uh, after everything you've actually just said, now you know talking about uh, the behavior of uh, people, of uh, you know the electorates, INEC official security forces. What would you even say? How would you say we've done so far as Nigerians in this electoral? Process? We've done well in this election. Done well. It doesn't get any better than this. One, there is an increasing maturity. Yes, we still have all, all these things that we're, all these things we're pointing out are part of the election process, the character of elections. Mm -hmm. And if it could happen in the U.S. where, you know, some people it's stormed the capital, mm -hmm. then, you know, really, we've done well. What I see in these elections is that people have become more aware of their civic responsibility. And it doesn't get any better than this. And you see it in the results. You see it in the results, even though some might be emotional attachments and everything, but you see it in the results. You see that people have, you know, have kind of owned the process. And if Nigerians continue to have this heightened um, consciousness, then the, the next government that comes in will have a very tough time because Nigerians will hold them accountable. This, well, it's, a, it's an urban movement for now, but the rural areas will catch on. Mm. So how do you think the outcome of the presidential election and the National Assembly will impact the governorship election that is happening in two weeks? There's always that bandwagon. I, I'm sure that some governors are quaking now. <laughs> they are shaking in their boots <laughs> because th these results are an eye-opener. And must pass a message across to the governor that uh, you haven't done your homework quite well, though, that you must go back to the drawing board. You have two weeks because people might just go with the same mentality and say, oh, vote everything the same thing. And, you know, it will happen. Mm. Mm. Uh, although there's always been traditionally the, 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 there's been that difference between the governorship and uh, presidential election. I don't know why they separated again and brought the governorships to one week and the presidency to one week mm -hmm. before the governorship and the, uh, the presidential elections held on the same day. Then the national assembly elections and state assembly elections held on the same day. But now we're back to the, so governors have time to go and, you know, tweak okay. things up. All right, so INEC had actually said that 87 million Nigerians collected their PVCs. Yeah. Is it possible that that amount of electorates actually came out to vote? No. Uh, in fact, uh, the figure for Lagos registered uh, voters was over 7 million. Yes. But the results we've seen so far is less than 2 million. Yes. No. Just, you understand? That is why I always say that people that register is, is, in, is in phases. People that register, registered voters are there. What about those that even collected their PVCs? Mm. Then after collecting their PVCs, yeah, what about the people that went out to vote? There are still people that are playing football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were still. <laughs> yeah. So why do you think, uh, what factors do you think contributed to them not voting? Well, there are a lot of factors. Chief of which was in some areas and some states, there's a fuel crippling. We there's a crippling fuel scarcity. There is the no naira. Yeah, to even transport naira, yourself. To even transport your yourself. Well, if you say there was uh, fuel scarcity, but then uh, most of the polling units are supposed to be close to where you stay, which means that you could but actually some just didn't. 
You could actually just walk to the polling unit. Some didn't do that. Out. Some. I, 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 I know many people in, in Abuja because of the um, registration pro process then, mm. how difficult it was then. Many people registered close to their offices. Mm. You know? And so, a lot of people who are not invested in well, where there's no fuel scarcity in Abuja. So, yeah, you could easily transport yourself mm. to your polling unit. But what about those states in which you registered, but you didn't register close to your house because maybe the polling unit in front of your house, the queue was so long. So you went somewhere else to go and register. That is what has... So you see, and then there are some states. Funny enough, um, if you look at the statistics this time around, you see that in the southern states that you have a, a larger turnout than the northern states. So it raises the questions about well, why, why, are, why are northern states... Why, 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 why are they not coming out yeah. to vote? So there are many variations, there are many sides to this story that we're talking about. All right, well, we'll take a pause there. And uh, this is uh, a video of uh, the PDP agent, uh, Dino Melaye, you know, uh, asking questions, asking the INEC chairman questions uh, during the collation at the ICC. Take a look. Mr. Chairman, the purpose for amending the Electoral Act and making electronic transmission of results from polling units is to enhance the transparency, credibility of the process. In accordance with Section 65 and Section 64, four of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended, I want to demand that while the two other screens can show the results as presented by the returning officer, the center screen should actually show the uploaded results. That is the only way we can compare and be sure that what the returning officers are presenting is in consonance with the uploaded results. because without uploading the results, and we are making a comparison here, we, it will be difficult to know where beavers were bypassed. Because upload is supposed to be done immediately after voting. And I have your manual for electoral officers here, and it is so stipulated therein. So we will want, as the presentation is done state by state, the uploaded results on your server should be displayed. What they, are display, what they are presenting also displayed by the two smaller screens, then we'll be able to know if what is uploaded is what is being presented. That is the only way the transparency of this process can be guaranteed. That is the way bypassing um, beavers can be detected, and that is the only way we can get results. Because more than 10 times, Barrister Fessos Okoye made press conferences and told Nigerians that beavers and electronic transmission of results have come to stay. We want to see it in practice. Thank you. Okay, any further comments before I respond? <clears throat> With the process cost. Mr. Chairman, sir, I just wish to... And the INEC made a press statement. When uploads were not done, you even said there was no hacking of your server and all that. And everyone sitting there is either a Christian or a Muslim. And you know there was problem with uploading your results. Till this minute I'm speaking, many results have not been uploaded on your server. So you cannot be using justification that it both took place at the polling unit when INEC failed in uploading results from polling units. If you had uploaded those results 
immediately after votes was casted in each polling unit. We will have access to them and I will not be asking questions here. But as I speak to you, those results were not uploaded for hours, for hours. Yesterday, I complained to you, the chairman. I complained to two other commissioners. And in my presence, they called um, the wreck in Imo, where even the director of ICT was saying they should use offline to upload. So if results were not uploaded, if results were not uploaded, we as parties cannot be challenged that the process is over. The process is not over because it is faulty, results were not uploaded, and if those results were not uploaded, we are definitely going to contest the authenticity of whatever presentation is being made here. And finally, sir, I want to challenge any returning officer from any state coming here because there's penalty for you if you lie or if you alter anything. Tell us before you start your presentation that what you are presenting before cameras that what you are presenting is what you have, what is uploaded on INEC website. Please say that and see if you have given wrong information, you will not go to jail. Okay. Is there any agent of all right, uh, welcome back. That was Dino Melaye. And while we're actually watching that, uh, Mr. Kenny, Mr. Kenny side. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kenny, what were your thoughts while watching that, <laughs> that, that, that video? <laughs> Uh, I guess it's in the it's in the nature of Dino Melaye to be militant, but <laughs> you know. Does it appear as if uh, undue emphasis is is being placed on this uploading of the results yes, into the server? Yes, there is undue emphasis being placed on it. Uh, it's almost as if they want to um, invalidate or rubbish the credibility. Mm. All right, so, well, sorry, we'll pause here. So we actually have uh, uh, the National Coalition agent uh, joining us live. He's uh, Mohammed Ibrahim Bu, and he's joining us from the Coalition Center here in the FCC. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us on Nigeria Decides today. Hello? Yes, if you can good hear me, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, Good afternoon. So, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, the pleasure is all ours. I can hear you, yes. Yeah. All Thank right. So you can you please uh, give us uh, an insight on, you know, what the process is like at the Coalition Center? How is it going? Well, here, here at the National Coalition Center, so far, uh, only about uh, so far only four states have submitted uh, their results and, and, and these four, four states I think uh, there has been some issues uh, be, uh, some, some party agents are, are really are challenging some of the results, but uh, generally it has been smooth, and uh, uh, so far it's been peaceful. Uh, but the only thing is I can say is that uh, the process is very slow, because you can imagine 48 hours after election, and uh, we are yet to get uh, even close to uh, about half of the states. Only four out of 36 states have so far. Uh, brought their uh, their results, so this this process is likely to take us beyond even uh, uh, maybe Tuesday or so, <laughs> and which uh, I think uh, is not is not is not the best. Um, talking about party agents, they have raised concerns about the upload of results into the server. What's your take on that? Yes. Well, actually, from, from what the INEC have told us prior to the election, is that uh, results from the polling units are going to be uploaded to the national server of INEC. But uh, this has not been so. As we speak today, now, I don't think uh, most of the results 
have been uploaded at the server. And this is why uh, the party agents are challenging the, the uh, I mean, INEC that uh, what, uh, what is happening now is not uh, in conformity with what they told us earlier. So really, uh, people, are, people are challenging INEC on this issue. And uh, I think uh, INEC should do better than what we are experiencing now. You're not comfortable with INEC's explanation on the, the hitch Hello? so far, on the hitch about uploading the results? Well, uh, the thing is, this is what they told us that they are going to do. But they have not been able to come out to tell us what challenges they have. If they had said, OK, look, this thing that we told you uh, of uploading results from the polling units to the server, we have had some hitches. As such, uh, we are very sorry or we have not been able to contend with the issues. I think that will be un is understandable. That is why the party agents are asking any uh, returning officer from the states sh should first of all say whatever he's going to, uh, uh, to present at this co National Coalition Center is what has been or have been uploaded at, uh, at the National INEC server. Once he says that, then we can continue uh, I mean, with the process. At the end of the day, if it doesn't tally with what they have sent from the polling unit, then uh, it can be challenged. I think the, the chairman uh, is avoiding that uh, from what uh, we see. And the uh, agents are not happy with that kind of uh, position taken by the chairman. Though he said he has noted it, but we expect him to make a categoric statement. Uh, on the issue. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, so now, uh, first is Okoye earlier actually said that uh, they're expecting uh, seven to eight uh, results from uh, f results from seven to eight states and so far you've said just four states have submitted their results. Should we be expecting more today, more results from states today? That, that's what we we are hoping. For example, we closed at 1 o'clock and they said 2 o'clock we should reconvene. But uh, from all indications, it's now to 3 o'clock. Uh, we are to, yet to, uh, I mean, to resume uh, the process of collecting uh, coalition results from the states. And that means, which means the states are not here yet, you know, uh, maybe due to some other logistic problems which they, uh, INEC, uh, which they have. So we are still waiting, because if they said 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, we expect them to be here at that 2 o'clock. Now, for about two hours, we have been on recess, and that means uh, the states, uh, the, the, the results from the states are not ready. That's what it means. So which means it will run into maybe Tuesday or even Wednesday. Mr. Mohammed, you know, uh, moving forward, what do you think INEC can do to hasten the process, you know, in the future? In the future, I think if they had really activated their system, you get these results from the, uh, from the polling unit. Going from, uh, from the unit to work to the paper, which has begun to be done headquarters. Then from here, we can just uh, download it and print it out and give everybody. Oh, well, sadly, the audio is bad, but thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim Bu, for uh, you know uh, for answering some of our questions. Uh, that uh, the uh, is a national coalition agent, you know, who is live at the National Coalition Center uh, right here in the FCT.
All right, um, uh, Mr. Kendi, there was something he talked about. He said that uh, despite all these concerns raised, that INEC hasn't spoken to them about the fact that the results were not uploaded, that INEC hasn't given them a reason why that uh, was not done. Well, it's strange that they will be complaining about uh, that. Uh, I, I, because the INEC and the agents are supposed to work together on this thing, and that is what we. So, if his claim is true, then um, it would be strange that uh, INEC has not come out to be transparent at, la at least in that uh, respect. I'm also wondering that the delay in the resumption of collation could be because uh, INEC is trying to sort out the objections raised by the uh, agents and, you know, try and um, mend the bad situation. Because if the, if, if the agents continue to throw uh, mud on the credibility of the results, then we have a bad situation. All right. Well, uh, sadly, this is where we will take uh, a pause on this hour on Nigeria Decides 2023. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kenny, for, you know, sticking around. Boy, you're still here with us, by the way. When we come back at the top of the hour, <laughs> you know, we'll continue this discussion and more. All right. Do stick around. And uh, you're still watching Trust TV right here in the Federal Capital Territory. We'll be right back. Officer for the 2023 Jamaa Sangha Federal Constituency Election held on the 25th day of February 2023. The election was contested and the candidate received the following votes Jack Daniel of ADC, 561 votes. Usman Yaakubu Anto of APC, 26,793 votes. Abe J.B. A. Moses of Labour Party, 22,979 votes. Ademu Baba Ransom of ANPP. 1,066. Amos Daniel of PDP, 32,578 votes. Haruna Abdullahi Umar, PRP, 187 votes. Lucas Ibrahim Piaz. 52 votes that Amos Daniel of People Democratic Party, PDP, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared winner and is returned elected. <laughs> Uh, this is the final result of collation of uh, senatorial district of Colonel South. 
uh, for the 2023 General Senatorial District election. Uh, the result is as follows. Uh, total number of registered voters, uh, 1,1597,000. Four eight nine. Number of accredited voters five five six four seven one. Uh, vote received by parties uh, A A one eight three A D C uh, one two one four A P C one nine two five one eight A P M one nine four four. LP two eight seven five NNPP three one nine eight five seven NRM five one five PDP one four eight eight zero YPP four one five seven ZLP five nine zero FE Four seven. Total valid votes five six eight seven eight zero. Uh, rejected votes one one zero six zero. Total vote cast five four nine eight four zero. Excuse me, sir. Total valid votes five three eight seven eight zero. Five three eight seven eight zero. For the total valid vote, I, Professor Ibrahim M. Berdi, hereby certify that one, <coughs> and the returning officer for the Kano 2023 Kano South. South Senatorial District election are uh, held on 25th day of February 2023. Number two, the election was contested. Number three, the candidates received the following votes. Number one, Idris Bashir bin Abalam uh, uh, of uh, AA got 183 votes. 183 votes. That I am the returning officer for the 2023 Sampara West senatorial district election held on the 25th day of February 2023. The election was contested. The candidate received the following votes. One, Mohammed Bello of AA party, 65 votes. Two, Ibrahim Musa Anka of the ADC scored a total of 150 votes. Three, Suleiman Nawali of the ADP scored a total of 239 votes. Four, Bubakar Aziz Yari of the AP PC scored a total of 147,346 votes. Allah. 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 Salam. Nazibu of the Abga scored a total of 258 votes. Ahmad Lawali of the APP scored a total of 75 votes. Aliu Jahaya of the Labour Party scored a total of 111 votes. Adamu Abdul Malik of the NNPP scored a total of 363 votes. Sakin Fagom Muhammad Bello of the PDP scored a total of 58,832 votes. Votes. Umar Muhammad Gumi of the Social Democratic Party scored a total of 62 votes. Aliyu Ibrahim of the YPP 
scored a total of 85 votes. That Abu Bakr Abdulaziz Yari of the APC, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Allah. 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 Thank you very much. Professor Ahmed Yakub Ashuku, hereby certify that I am the returning officer for the 2023 National South Senatorial District election. The election held on 25th day of February 2023. The election was contested and the candidates received the following votes. Number one. Kerry Stephen of Party A received 1,281 votes. Musa Abdul of ADC received 711 votes. Almakura Tanko Umaru of APC received 76,813 votes. Odela Bawa Elari got 9,988 votes. Abdullah Musa Agwe of NNPP got 3,640 votes. Idris Musa Ali of NRM got 190 votes. Onao Muhammad Ogoshi of PDP got 93,064 votes. Alu Ademumu Azu of SDP got 13,642 votes. And finally, Olga Kletus of Z the ZLP got 2,863 votes. That Onao Muhammad Ogoshe of PDP, having satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner and adult staff. We are letting we don't record any casualty, the many we are attacked. But the few that were are everywhere, the electoral officer and several others, they are able to retrieve some of the documents, some results, all the papers and the rest. They were evacuated. When you say evacuation, emergency is purely emergency. And uh, you know how they are being evacuated, agents attacked, they joined them. The police will not say, no, these are people who don't go your way. So they brought them right here. That's the situation. The other that are able to retrieve with their documents, there is a small coalition to be examining them. We brought our data, they brought the data. They are now trying to retrieve the data. When they think, just like it's now the area, my own is to tell you the circumstances. When they finish, the chief coalition officer will do the needful. So, but this is the information. You know, when you say Takai is here, it's because we have not come to Takai. The one we come to Takai is my responsibility to tell you what happened. Professor Yunus Aumaru, he has satisfied that I am the returning officer for the 2023. Jama Sangha Federal Constituency Election held on the 25th day of February 2023. The election was contested and the candidate received the following votes. Jack Daniel of ADC. 
Welcome back. You're still watching Nigeria Decides on Trust TV, reaching you live from the nation's capital. Now let's uh, cross over to Aisha Salihu at Transco, where she's uh, working with some observers there. She'll give us an update of, on what is happening. Hello, Aisha. Hello, Stella. So can you, how are you doing? I'm very well. Oh, okay. I'm very That's well. great. Can you uh, give us a rundown of what's happening at the Situation Room there? Okay, right here, the, okay, right here, the European, European addressed, Union had uh, just addressed the press conference, uh, where, the they press conference per, where they preliminary gave findings uh, pre preliminary findings of the observations throughout the elections, elections the presidential and the national or assembly or elections. But I'd like for you to, for you to hear from the chief observer uh, himself, uh, Andrew Barry. Barry. He's here joining me live. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. You just addressed the press conference, and then the viewers are watching now. I'd like for you to just summarize some of the things you told us. First of all, we're honored to be invited here by INEC to carry out this election observation mission. We came here in early January, and we will stay all the way through April and produce a final report three months after the entire election process is finished. So we're here for the long haul, and today's preliminary findings are just that, preliminary. And, uh, and so one of the positive things that has to be noted is this, this went ahead on the day it was planned and broke a pattern of postponements in previous elections. So that was very welcome. And broadly speaking, uh, the elections took place in a peaceful environment. However, um, the technology that, that is associated with the electoral system held out a lot of promise and unfortunately many of those expectations were not met. And our assessment is that this was a missed opportunity on the the part of INEC to uh, instill much greater trust uh, in, uh, in the integrity of the electoral process. So that's a preliminary finding. As we speak, our uh, observers are continuing to gather information at uh, collation centers um, as tabulation continues. Maybe too soon to ask for your recommendations. Yes, we don't do a recommendation. Yes, we, we don't do a recommendation until the final report. So at this stage, it's a preliminary assessment. Um, uh, but we, we, we make our assessment based on what we've observed so far. Uh, we try to share information with domestic observers who are based here in Nigeria permanently and also with international observer missions from the African Union and, and from ECOWAS. Um, but our, uh, our observations so far have been, uh, I, I think, um, as honest as they can be. We have, there have been issues around insecurity that have led to uh, suppression of voter turnout. Uh, there's been a very low level of women's participation in this election, um, which is not in keeping with the manifestos and the political platforms of all of the parties. And the high number of women who registered to vote indicates a massive appetite to actually participate in the political system. So there are, it's up to Nigerians to decide what they want to do with the assessment that we, we've shared with people today. Uh, we don't interfere in any way in the political system. And in that way, our uh, assessment I think is taken seriously and it is uh, it has a, an impact the recommendations you've made in the past years do you think the independent national electoral commission somehow um, uh, implemented some of those recommendations yeah well uh, we, we do come back after elections and the, most recently uh, a, a different mission came back a European Union electoral observation mission came back a year ago to examine whether or not the recommendations of the 2019 uh, re election were actually implemented. And what we found was that out of 30 uh, recommendations, 13 were implemented or partially implemented. So that's a good return. Uh, of the others, some of them had attempts had been made, for example, to try and introduce in affirmative action into uh, women's participation in politics. Attempts were made in that regard, unsuccessful as it, as it turned out. So we think we make an impact. And because the spirit in which the uh, recommendations are made, which is about constructive criticism, uh, because that's understood, I think our, our, our findings are taken seriously and uh, we find that um, we have an impact and we, uh, we, we, we achieve what we want to achieve, which is to deepen the roots of democracy here in Nigeria. Thank you so much. My great pleasure. Well, there you have it, the Chief Observer of the European Union Election Observation Mission in Nigeria. He, he gave 
certain um, preliminary findings where he said he commended the efforts of the Independent National Electoral Commission, but then he, he also said there were some challenges. He, he highlighted a lot of challenges, technological challenges, especially with the updating of results. You know, uh, results were not uh, updated as soon as people expected them to be up, up, uploaded. Uh, to be updated, and, um, and also he, he also made other pre uh, preliminary findings. Stella. Aisha Salu, thank you very much for that update. Um, we also have um, somebody to give us a perspective on some of the things that are happening across the state. In incidentally, he's also, he was an observer for this election. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon. Mm. All right, so uh, we'll be speaking with Ambassador Chibuzo Okereke. He is still an uh, election observer. Good afternoon once again. Good afternoon. So you actually heard what, uh, you know, our presenter, uh, what the chief observer of the EU actually said. And uh, he talked about suppression of voter turnout. And uh, he talked about uh, low participation of women when it came to the election. So being an election observer and having observed, you know, the process from, you know, the election process, accreditation and everything now up until the collation, what do you have to say about this process? Well, so far? you know, th there have been different schools of thoughts in what, uh, what is going on. Some schools believe we have made some incremental progress. Uh, we should appreciate it and hope for more. After all, ours is a nascent democracy. Others believe that we, have, we know too much, we have a lot of competent people, and that based on uh, the world of information of today, that we have the capacity to do better than what we are doing now. And I think that I belong to that school of thought. The, you see, I don't know why we should be giving excuses to something that we can actually get done and get, you know, done right. So, in, in this particular process, from the voter registration to PVC collection to where we are today, you could see that we have a very big challenge. For instance, in the places where we observed, we discovered that even, you know, private people were helping the INEC or ad hoc staff to convey their materials because the logistics were not just there. One in a in a world that has about fifty-eight pulling units, only one vehicle is assigned to take them around the whole pulling unit. And some of them had to start by eleven thirty, twelve, one o'clock as you know okay. the case uh, may be. Uh, just people. before you go ahead, Stella, I would actually have to cut you short there, uh, because we already have uh, someone on standby at the moment uh, from the ICC, the National Coalition Center, and his name is Chinemelo Uba, and he's an APC coalition agent. Uh, Mr. Chinemelo, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Um, a, a point of correction, it's actually APP. P, yes, I, I didn't get that right at first. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. So, you know, uh, can you share your thoughts on the thank coalition you. process so far, uh, being that you are actually live at the National Coalition Center? Uh, uh, is it what is happening here or the entire electoral process? What is happening there? Okay. Um, so far, collection has been going on. I think um, we've had about four states. Uh, but um, there is this agitation that is apt. Um, Dino um, championed it, have supported the agitation. The agitation is that um, the process has been allegedly been marred by um, irregularities and um, lack of transparency. So we have requested that um, the, the, the voting results transmitted electronically should be shown at this center for transparency's sake. 
and um, up to now, it is sad that um, the chairman has not addressed that issue. What you're saying, they are not satisfied? Sorry, I lost you somehow. Sorry. Yes. Are, are you saying that you are not satisfied with the whole process so far? Obviously, no, obviously nobody should be satisfied with what is going on here. It's as if um, we're going back to the years prior to Beavers. If they told us that elections will be transmitted, election results will be transmitted electronically, we, we should see it happening. And as a fact, this center is the place to see it happening. People have not seen it happen in the world's pulling unit, the local government, the states. We are insisting that it should happen here. Let it be evident that these results were transmitted electronically. Let it be projected here, whatever was transmitted electronically. Let's compare it with what um, the state's recs are giving us here. That is Mr. Chinemelo. and I think it's right. All right, and Mr. Timely also. Mr. Chinemelu, the thing is this, we have heard from the agent of the PDP saying the same thing, and also the National Coalition agent for the SDP. So what has INEX said to you? Is, has it told you why this is not done? That, that, that is our serious agitation now, up to now. I personally said the chairman should tell us if there were technical issues which um, sometimes occur. You should say that. But if it's deliberate, we also need to know about the fact it, ha it has not been done and nobody has addressed that. They want us to progress in error. It's wrong. It has not been addressed. I, um, one of the agents said all the agents met uh, a couple of minutes ago. So if uh, nothing changes, what did you agree as agents to do? from this moment? Uh, you, wa you, you watch and see in the next moment if they, if they refuse to, to, to assent to that, you, you see it by yourself. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us, Mr. Chinemelo Uba. He's uh, the APP or an APP coalition agent. Thank you so much. All right, let's come back to the studio where we still have Ambassador Chibuzo Okereke here with us. He's an election observer. Uh, we apologize for actually no, cutting no, the show, no you know, mm. earlier. So uh, you were talking about uh, what the chief EU observer actually said. Yeah, yeah, you know, he, he mentioned the issue about uh, the, the your reporter asked him about the uh, recommendations they have made in the past. But more importantly, he talked about voter suppression. Mm. And it's an embarrassing thing. Across the country, you could see videos of people from different polling units snatching ballot buses, taking away beavers, you know, and destroying the ballot papers that, you know, voters had already used. This is most embarrassing. And you ask yourself, do you really want to come and lead because if you really want to come and lead people, why would you go and truncate the will of those people that you want to come and lead? That means you want to lead them by force. Thousands and millions of Nigerians were disenfranchised. This is the fact. And for me, we shouldn't even be, and I'll come to what uh, the APP agent said, we shouldn't be doing coalition now. In any country where democracy is prime, we should be doing rerun elections in the polling unit where people were disenfranchised. It doesn't make sense that your citizens who are eligible are protesting on video, calling on the umpire that we need to vote. This is the situation. Some polling units, they arrived by 2 p.m., 3 p.m., some voted till 4 a.m. in Lagos, as we have seen in many reports. Why can't we have elections take place? INEC has done something significant that is good. All the polling units are properly coded. But I also saw something that surprised me in data, that most of the polling units, 
Even the INEC officials don't know their location. Mm -hmm. They are not able to locate the pooling units. Then the voters that have been transferred to those new units don't also know where they are. And you know why? Because our pooling units are not actually and properly delineated. Mm. It is not even a particular site. It is, it is an, around some kind of uh, an environment. Then you choose a spot. Where, no, we should go you know, past that. But let me talk about this issue about uh, transmitter result and what have you. For me, it's a failure of the political parties. I made, I think I was on this studio, or was it in your sister station? I said, these elections will be won and lost by how the parties are organized and how they deploy their agents. Mm. I next published list of agents. Many of them had, you know, agents in all the pooling units and more. Where are the results obtained by the agent? And where are the complaints? Because for me, a collection center of a party mm -hmm. should have finished tallying results from pooling unit to ward level, to state, to local government, to state before coming okay, to federal. Okay, Ambassador Kereke, you know. we also had uh, a guest here who mentioned uh, just what you said, yeah. that the agents were at the polling units where these things happened. They were at the state collation center as well, and some of them even signed the results yeah. sheets. So, but what these people are insisting on now is that it should be uploaded so that they can see it when they I, what, what is important to me mm -hmm. is that the this agent, national agent, mm -hmm. they are right in a way. Mm -hmm. Because for me, INEC would have, have one display board showing the tallies they have done from pulling units. And another display board showing what the, uh, the, the state uh, collection officers are presenting. If you watch the state collation activities, you will see where the collation officers were intervening in the presentation by local government uh, mm -hmm. uh, collation officer, telling them it doesn't tally, it tallies or it doesn't tally. Now, when we get to Abuja, it should even be the climax of everything, mm -hmm. whereby all the results from the pooling unit are on display, state by state. All right, uh, Ambassador, even if, for instance, for whatever reason, it's not able to be done that way, should that, should that really be no, a problem? No, it is a problem because that is, you have more that transparency. Mm. The but, only, but, the, but the question a lot of people are asking is that the agents of this party were at the state level, they were at the world level, they were at the local government, you, you and see, they monitor uh, the this, process this, to this, this point. This election, I think, is the Yaga Africa who describe it as a lost opportunity. This election has collapsed. It has taken us back to 2003, 2007. Some people said it's an improvement it's of the last. It's not an improvement of anything. The, the only area that has improved, we you know we are dealing with specifics, issue of collation and transmission. Mm. In terms of bringing bogus 5 million, 10 million votes, it's not mm. there because the, the beavers, beavers made effort to authenticate people. But what I'm saying is that the parties failed to establish collation centers, whereby all their pooling unit agent. I repeat, pooling unit agent. Mm. Because in the word collation, somebody can sign for you and claim is your agent. That is the that is the truth because and it's not compulsory. Well, that that would be the problem of the party. The, the, not that is the problem of the party because yes. if the party had tallied their results, they will be in this national collation center with the copy of the results state by state so he can stand up and say mr chairman sir in this state this is what we have so the chairman will admit a copy from the agent so that before chairman will make final pronouncement he will go to his panel and then reconcile what the parties are presenting and for me also INEC is failing in not allowing the, the, this uh, state collation officer to appear here with pulling unit results. We are doing manual, meanwhile we promise technology. Okay, so uh, you, t you talked about, you know, INEC, you know, so this elections being a failure already. So are you also of the school of thought that uh, INEC is compromised somehow? Well, I will, not, I will call it inefficiency, incompetence, and a lot of human factor, which could mean compromise. For instance, no, by the training and the provision of the Electoral Act, no pooling officer, no presiding officer should have left the pooling unit 
without posting the result on the wall of that area and transmitting it with the beavers. The idea that the pulling presiding officers were told to come to the collation, uh, world collation center because they could not transmit does not make any sense. Because if we want to be transparent, all these results are supposed to be in the pooling unit. If you watch, the ones they have are online already. But most of the results were not posted. All so right. it, it was an infraction on that on the Electoral Act, you know, 2022. So this is the area we could say the institution of INEC, and I agree with uh, Dr. Sam Ahmadi, after this election, we need to unbundle that place and conduct serious audits. President Jonathan himself admits that you cannot be having logistic problem for 24 years. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense. All right, Ambassador, just hold your thoughts. We need right. to uh, cross over to the ICC and we'll come back to you. Yeah. All right, uh, at the ICC, we have the Executive Director, Ness Action, Eniola Cole. He'll be speaking with us now. Good afternoon, Madam. Hello, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, please, can you give us a rundown of what you have observed yes. so far? Okay, um, so NAS Action, uh, our organization, deployed nationwide uh, um, elections observers to different polling units to observe polling procedures, availability of materials, uh, the process, uh, any electoral malpractices that were found, and um, so far, we have received feedback from the different states on their observation reports. Now, one of the things that is really interesting to us is the turnout of voters. People came out en masse, people were mobilized en masse to come out to uh, vote their choice. The procedures went well. Um, on a general outlook, the poll officials knew what they were doing to a large extent uh, up to the sorting and counting of ballots as well as the recording of votes. Uh, the bone of contention now has been the INEC election results viewing portal that everyone is talking about and what place it actually takes in um, securing the transparency and the validity of this election. Now, um, what we all prepared for uh, ahead of time was ensuring that it was available from the polling unit. But what we have seen is there's a lot more that this uh, dynamic of this new innovation is bringing that we did not prepare for. And one of those key uh, dynamics is training the office of the citizen, so to speak. Uh, because as elections observers, as uh, the electoral umpire, as political party agents, security agencies, the media, everyone receives some level of training to handle uh, election results as they come in. But we forgot to train the citizen. Uh, there is a lot of speculation out there. There is a lot of um, unfounded reports. There's a lot of fake news as well uh, that needs to be curbed in order to sustain the sovereignty of the nation state of Nigeria. Um, right now, the portal has been open. Uh, I, I think it doesn't require login details anymore. Anyone who wants to see the portal can see it. Uh, we're right here in the collation center. There has been some drama. And um, some of the requests being made may not be well grounded on the electoral law. Uh, the electoral law had insisted that results be uploaded to the IREV. And I believe that's one of the reasons for the delay in the announcement of each state result because they probably want to ensure that it's already uploaded on the IREV before they go ahead with the declaration of the results. And um, as we noticed that, of course, first of all with AKT uh, yesterday, before it was declared here in the ICC, in the National Coalition Center, it was already uploaded on the IREV. So now that the IREV is open access without requiring login details anymore, Everyone could go on uh, to take a look and see what exactly it looks like because there are some reports going out on social media that obviously this did not come from the IREV, but people are trying to make it out to look like it did. And there's a lot of uh, political uh, attempts to sabotage the electoral process, which is unfounded, 
on the electoral law. INEC may have promised to deliver on the IRF being a part of the process, but I don't believe there was any promise that it must be shown hand in hand with what is uh, declared here in the collation center as the official result. Every party had their party agents on field from the polling unit to the world collation level to the LGA level to the state level. Let's not make unfounded demands that would only de delay the process further. National security is at stake right now because of a lot of voters that are agitated. We don't want to heat up the polity any more than it already is. So we would implore every stakeholder to embrace the spirit of sportsmanship uh, with the availability of the IRF. For the first time ever, every citizen across the country can look at the election result of any state, any polling unit, and that is a huge plus. Let's not heat up the polity. There's the availability and the option of taking legal action where you are dissatisfied with the process. There's a space of 90 days for um, submission of claims and the hearing of uh, election petition tribunals. So let's go through the appropriate quarters and not throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. To let you go, and you're like, oh, thank you so much for speaking with us on this. That was uh, fantastic. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. All right, now uh, we'll uh, come back to the studio where we still have Ambassador Chibuzo Kereke, an election observer, you know, uh, speaking to us. Now, uh, before I, I go ahead and ask, you know, uh, some of these questions, you heard what uh, Eniola Ko has actually said concerning the whole process, you know, especially the coalition. And she seems to be, you know, uh, one of the patient ones that we've actually spoken with today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, I, I think that uh, she's right. In a, in a way, and I, I, I told you here that the parties, they are speaking without any paper and using phone to calculate. It doesn't make sense. You are supposed to come to that venue with results that your agent had given you to know, you. You know, there was something she said. She said that even though the, the law said that they should upload the result into the IRF, mm. the law did not say that it should be showing side by side while the sc uh, score is announcing the result, which is what the agents are now asking for. No, uh, well, what they're asking for is not necessary, and I don't think it's granted in, in law. It is actually INEC that needs to verify what the state collation officers are, are presenting. Well, you heard yeah, what yeah. the last the man before and you said. He said, in, he said in the next couple of minutes we'll see what will happen. Well, whatever you know, they plan be, to should happen. Should we be having that at this whatever point? Whatever they plan to do cannot even take us to anywhere. And it's not the... You see, they have missed the opportunity. If I'm running a political party collation center, I will make sure, except they don't have agents. And if they don't have agents, or maybe they had agent, but there were political interference at the pooling unit that made it possible for them not to obtain the pooling unit result. Then that is the report they will use to prepare for tribunal. But to come and hold INEC, in fact, INEC can display anything and tell you from the, you know, it's from the IRA. But again, the parties, I think they should uh, follow the law and follow the rule in making any demands they are making of INEC uh, a chairman. The opportunity has already been missed by not allowing the pooling unit uh, result to be transmitted. INEC admitted, because INEC, in fact, is the cause of this problem. Why the political parties are to be blamed for not organizing their house, we have to also blame INEC for claiming that the IRF portal had crashed because they trans they they, they migrated it from off cycle election to general election, whatever. You know, they say it doesn't, you are supposed to build the platform for the general election mm -hmm. and use it to test run off cycle election. So that it crashed, that lack of transparency, because a lot of people wanted to go there and ensure that the result on the IREV is they would have tabulated it, you know, by now. So mm -hmm. INEC created this. A crisis, but people call it technology failure. But I believe, with giving us date for election for one year ago, they should be able to so do you, the you're right. So you're saying you're saying they were not ready, even though they they claim to be ready. Well, the, the the, the, the is so it, many challenges. A lot of factors. If you're in a country, a multi-dimensional, multi-faceted, multi-ethnic, multi-religious 
highly politically tensioned country, you don't get into this type of problem you call technology problem. For instance, many of the presiding officers claimed they were able to upload senatorial and House of Rep elections. I'm not able to upload presidential. And in many of the units where they cutted away ballot boxes, they left House of Rep and Senate and took away only presidential. Mm. So something, you know, is wrong. And then I make the relied on and tells them that the open, transparent portal had crashed and is unable to receive, you know, any result. Now, how do you know what is being? Because there are claims allegedly mm. that some PU, POs, you know, were cornered to change. For instance, if your beavers had accredited 300 people mm -hmm. in a unit, and agents were chased away, the ad hoc staff were taken to somewhere else, mm -hmm. the ballot buses uh, were destroyed, mm -hmm. and then they had the enough time to thumbprint that 300 to favor a particular party um, and still use their... Ambassador, no, I'm not trying to... They, can the beavers actually do that? Because the no, beavers no. does a lot of accreditation the, before no, no. you can talk Once the so beavers had finished, I'm just telling yeah. you, if the beavers had finished accrediting 300 people who had voted, mm. but before the vote is counted, people were dispersed. Mm. And those who were to count it were taken to somewhere. And then they decided to now record different results and still use the beaver to snap the result and send to INEC. It's called the error of original entry. You can <laughs> never ever discover that that was one. Because if you go to the beavers, it's still showing you 300 accredited. Mm. You check the vote of uh, parties, it's showing you 300. So no overvoting, no undervoting, but parties have been assigned different course. Mm. That is why it should be done okay. in the glare of everybody. All right, uh, Mr. Okereke. Now, uh, moving back to, you know, uh, what happened uh, earlier, talking about the chief EU observer when he was actually speaking to us, he talked about, you know, recommendations and reports and yeah, all that. Now, too. what difference or impact do these recommendations or reports actually, you know, have on our elections, especially, you know, uh, coming from the fact that these elections have been happening for a while right now and then we still have so much challenges yeah you know these uh, international observer groups are not just observing they are huge democratic support organizations mm. they put in a lot of money manpower and technical support to INEC this is the truth mm. unfortunately the recommendations they are making may not be things INEC can do without a legal framework and if you are, for instance, the EU officer mentioned the issue of a, a special seat for women mm. to improve women participation. Mm. The four Bs failed in the National Assembly during the Constitution Amendment. It was part of their recommendation. But I'm happy that he said a year ago, a special team from the EU were in Nigeria mm. to look at how much of the previous recommendation has been implemented. And according to him, about 13 have partially or fully been implemented. But you could see they are very keen on women. For women, voter registration is over 47% in this particular uh, dispensation. So, and uh, if we're unable to find a common ground to improve women participation, either through quota or special seat in the parliament or what have you, then we will not have been fair to such huge uh, Population. And I tell you, in the places we observe and across the villages, if you could take exit pools, you would see that women and youth recorded the highest yes, number yeah. in all participation. Right, uh, all right, yeah. uh, with that, I think we'll be moving back to the ICC, that's the National Coalition Center, uh, where we have uh, Mr. Bameyi Vidieno, uh, National Coalition Agent of the YPP on standby. Good afternoon, Mr. Bameyi, and thank you so much for joining us on Trust TV. All right, uh, please, can you go ahead and give us, you know, uh, share your Thank thoughts you. on the collation process so far? Okay, thank you very much. The collation process that is going on at the National uh, Collation Center so far is uh, 
is okay by my estimation and by my assessment. Uh, Mark you, you have to take note that uh, this is about the fifth level of collation. The first level is at the polling unit uh, where we had agents. Agents will ensure that uh, collation had been done and uh, results uploaded to INEX server. The second level is a ward collation center where the results from the polling unit goes to the ward and from the ward to the local government collection center which is the third and then the state collection center is the fourth level. So what we're doing here is the fifth and the final level of collation. So practically there is uh, very little that we can do to alter the results that have been brought here uh, other than making uh, observations that maybe might uh, have uh, arisen as a result of the information we've gotten from our agents down the ladder. So, so far so good. I think uh, what is happening here is very okay, it's very transparent, it's very clear and clean and uh, I don't see any problem with it whatsoever. Uh, agents who are, who are talk, uh, complaining about the, the delay in uploading the results into the server. Yes, that delay honestly is uh, something that we had never imagined would happen because uh, the uh, INEC had informed us before now that uh, the beavers can work with or without uh, internet connectivity. And uh, so we are surprised to see that there's been a lot of delay in uploading. Perhaps uh, some people are trying to sabotage the process, we don't know. But there has been quite uh, uh, some delay in uploading the results from the polling units. And uh, I think that is what is responsible for the delay in uh, these announcements. I actually explain to you the reasons why, you know, uh, they've still not resumed uh, sitting. Because from what we gather, it was supposed to resume 2 p.m. Yes. Uh, I don't know what is uh, responsible for this delay, uh, but somehow information that we are gathering from uh, colleagues and other people that we've spoken, I think they are trying to resolve the issue of uh, the upload of uh, results to the server before the results are announced here, before the uh, coalition agents or officers announce the results here. The view of the agents generally is that you, they should upload it at the server, INEX server, before it's announced, so that what is announced here will not be different from what is found on the server. So perhaps that is what they're trying to resolve, I don't know. But that issue had been made strongly here by some agents that uh, uh, they should ensure and give us assurance that what they're reading here is the same with what is uh, on the server. Agents are insisting that it should be uploaded and there should be a public display while, while the results are being announced. Are you among those insisting on that? Yes, uh, that is the procedure actually. The Electoral Act which has, uh, uh, was passed last year, 2022, clearly stipulates that uh, immediately voting is concluded and the counting done, the results, the polling presiding officer should snap the result and send to server. The same thing at each collation point. So uh, that we're, we're simply just stating the position of the law uh, that they should follow the law strictly. So we actually spoke to uh, the APP collation agent uh, and he talked about uh, you know something happening or them or the collation agents coming together having a meeting and planning on doing something uh, if uh, the sitting doesn't resume at about 4 p.m. Can you share with us with us I don't know if you were part of them or if you have an idea of what is actually supposed to happen after 4 p.m. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just hearing this information. No one has contacted me concerning that. So much uh, for joining us, Mr. Bamayi Vidiano. He is the National Coalition Agent of the YPP Live at the National Coalition Center at the ICC. Thank you so much. Now we'll come back to the studio where we still have Mr. Uh, Ambassador Chibuzo Kereke, an election observer, still with us.
Thank you. So, you, you know, when they say display here, I don't know what they are asking to be displayed. Because the electoral had talked about transmitting results from pooling units. And it's not a soft copy. It is a photograph, at best, uh, image. So somebody will need to work on it by computing it. So are they saying they want the... Because if a pooling unit result is being displayed here, it will, be, it will not tally with what is being presented. What is being presented has gone through three, four levels. As state. So they are just showing you, they are not even showing you uh, parties vote by a local government. They are showing you the vote parties got at uh, 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 state uh, level. Mm. So if you, if you decide to display those results sent by POs, you will not see it. So INEC and the parties failed in their responsibility. You know, we're already talking about the <laughs> fact that this result is being delayed. This request by the agents is further going to delay the entire process. It's better to get it right. Somebody said it's better to, for me to do the right thing and uh, fail than to do the wrong thing and pass. The, the truth is that the parties are not even looking at their own failures, right? Because these are parties that were allowed to deploy agents at all the pooling units. What did their agent tell them? about pulling units in Ward 1, Unit 01, 02, 26, 36, all that. What is the report that you have? It is that report you will use to confront the chairman here. Because the chairman needs evidence. The chairman cannot even do so much here. But if there is concrete evidence, maybe. For instance, I have seen the way the state collection officers are presenting their results. And I'm not totally satisfied. Because in the, in the units where elections were cancelled, mm. it is just an, a piece of paper okay. they use hand to write. Right, because those cancelled votes are important in determining the final score mm. because of the margin of lead uh, so, uh, Mr. Chibi, so in essence, what yeah. you're saying is since, you know, these uh, results were not displayed in the beginning, there's no point at all. I seem to be, INEC will be, <laughs> INEC will be further delayed. Okay. Because INEC needed to compute the result All from right. the pooling unit so that they will use it to verify what the state collection officers are presenting. But again, like somebody said, you have opportunity to do that, you know, in court, mm. if you have strong mm. evidence. I think kinda can be, if you think they are fooling themselves, allow them to continue that, you know, and finish presenting the whole all right uh, thank you so much yeah. ambassador chibuzo kereke an election mm. observer for joining us on nigeria decides 2023 thank today you. thank you for having time. me good job yes, indeed. Mm. all right uh, with that we'll go on a break and then when we come back after or at the top of the hour nigeria decides 2023 continues stick with us
TV. Documenting the Nigerian story. I crave your indulgence to give the clarification when we take the three states so that they go back and then the process will continue. So may I, may I invite the resident electoral commissioner for Ogun State, accompanied by the state coalition officer for the presidential election for Ogun State to make their presentation. I will come back to all the issues you have raised, I promise you. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Please, please resume your seat. You'll be given the opportunity to speak. Please resume your seat. Where is the mic? Mr. Chairman, sir, I represent the Labour Party. We have made observations. We crave the indulgence of the Commission to take seriously observation, and it appears that the Commission is not willing to listen to our own observations. It is in this note that we have, as a party, believed in your own statement and in the statement of the Commission, which you have been promising Nigerians that you are going to conduct credible and acceptable election through the vivas, which has been acclaimed, which has been said that it is going to be used for the purpose of uploading all the results. As it is, most of the results that have come so far were made observations. From the one that you have even declared here, we observed of our votings. And we have received from our own agent that the upload from the Bibas has not been taking place. So we therefore are not going to accept what we are presenting to us here. This is the position of the Labour Party. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Ina Okopi Agu. I'm the National Secretary of the African National Congress. I'd like to refer us to the Electoral Act 2022 as amended, section 64, subsection, you can refer to 64, yeah, section 64, subsection 4A and B. With your kind permission, I'll read. It says, a coalition officer or returning officer at an election shall collate and announce the result of an election subject to his or her verification and confirmation that A, a, num a number of accredited voters stated on the collated results are correct and consistent with the number of accredited voters recorded and transmitted, the keyword there is transmitted, directly from polling units under section 40 subsection 2 of this act as amended. B, the votes stated on the collated results are correct and consistent with the votes or results recorded and transmitted, keyword again, directly from polling units under section 60, subsection 4 of the act as amended. Now the point is, when I stood up the other time, the point we raised was that any scope that comes here to share and give Nigerians results from their state, you must demand from them. 
if this resource they are uploading or they are giving to us here had been uploaded before presenting to Nigerians. This is a simple thing that we want so that it is consistent with what the Electoral Act has requested the Commission to do. I don't know if this makes sense. Sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, my name is Emeka Ihedio. Mr. Chairman, I can proudly say that I'm a person of high standing in our society. I've been a legislator for 12 years. I was a presiding officer. Mr. Chairman, I was elected by my people as their governor. Mr. Chairman, I understand the processes and procedures. I'm a person who values the integrity of our system. But when there are doubts, it's important we all come up on one page. Sir, the desire of most Nigerians is that this process should be seen as free, fair, and transparent. I have been in contact with several agents of our parties across the country. Now, the fact is that results uploaded from polling units in a number of states are not what is being collected. Now, we've had incidents of hijack, we've had incidents of resort writing, we've had incidents of manipulation. It makes sense that we interrogate these processes so that we, at this point, if a result is collected and we accept that those results are okay, then it's good to go. If we do not interrogate these processes at this point, then it means that our business here has undermined the process. And Mr. Chairman, I plead with you to appreciate the point we've raised and give some time to look at this so that the integrity is sustained. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. Um, I want to actually refer the Commission because we have so much confidence, we from the political parties, we have so much confidence in your leadership. And we know, as a matter of fact, we've been engaged with a lot of quarterly meetings. We have discussed a lot. And we believe you want to give Nigerians the best. And the greatest thing you can do for us is, at the end of the day, let Nigerians, the votes that Nigerians casted be what, be what will be declared. I am very much aware that Section 65 of the Electoral Act, I know this commission has powers for review. If there are states, for instance, where there are discrepancies, I know section 65, subsection C, that has to do with the declaration of scores of candidates and the return of a candidate, provided that the commission shall have the powers within seven days to review the declaration and return, and return where the commission determines that the said declaration and return was not made voluntarily or was made contrary to the provisions of the law, regulations, and guidelines, and the manual for election. Sir, so please hearken to the cry and the voice of political parties, which I know and we trust you. Don't look at any pressure. We know you can handle this. After all, when forces we are trying to remove your assignment, chairman, we stood by you. And we believe you can give Nigerians the best. If there are areas where there are discrepancies, I know you have the powers to review. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Inkem Okando, agent for ADC. Um, Mr. Chairman, I've actually listened to my colleagues and I want to urge and plead. Since it is obvious that the um, the results, most of them have not been uploaded on the polling unit according to the electoral law that we just read. I want to appeal that we adjourn this session to maybe 24 hours to enable um, the state people, the state collection officers, to upload all their polling unit results so that we can proceed. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Chairman. I still represent APP. Chinamelova is my name. It is um, surprising that political parties who are supposed to be fighting now are in unison saying the same thing. Not just surprising, but fundamental. The 
There is no point progressing in error, Mr. Chairman. We are racing to nowhere. This election started on Saturday. Today is almost over. I insist, in line with my colleagues here, that we get it right. Let us get it right before we proceed with the collation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dino Belaya, PDP. Mr. Chairman, they said the voice of the people is the voice of God. Those of us who spoke from this angle are representatives of the political parties that participated in this election. And it is only responsible for INEC to listen to us. When you made your presentation earlier, you made it look as if agents are just here to rubber stamp whatever the um, returning officers are presenting. Because you said you passed that stage, it's at the stage of um, ward pulling units. But the provisions of Section 65 have already mandated you, because you are also a returning officer in this election. It's just the difference is that they are returning officers from the state, and you are returning results for the presidential election. And the provision of Section 65 is very, very unambiguous and is clear. And it is that you have the power and capacity to review results here. And you cannot review results if there are no agitation of infractions from the political parties. And that is what we are saying. That we cannot move forward except the law is respected, except the promise you made to Nigerians. I have just done a little research. You have promised Nigerians 68 times that beavers will work. And my brother, Barista Fessor Zokoye, after I checked using Google machine, I promised Nigeria 118 times that beavers will work. We want to see it work and working by going to the portal to see all these results. It worked in Edo. It worked in Osho. It must work in this presidential election. We cannot proceed with computation or collation of results when we don't, we cannot see. The confidence we have in this electoral act is the introduction of the electronic transmission of results. If that is not done, then there is no difference between what we are doing now and what we did in 2015, because what you are doing is practical manual collation. That means the billions of taxpayers' money, including mine, that was spent on the issue of beavers and transmission of electronic results is wasted. And we should not be wasters. We want a categorical response on this issue of uploading results. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, my name is Nzi Frank White. I represent the APP. Mr. Chairman, last Saturday, Nigerians trooped out in their mass in millions because of the confidence that the electronic transmission of results put in them. They came out and, you know, it was so massive that so many of them left what they're supposed to do. Those days of playing football in the streets, we are not seen on Saturday. Mr. Chairman, the integrity of this process will stand undermined if the electronic transmission that my colleagues here have requested is not guaranteed. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I will seek a clarification. Do we speak as individuals or we speak for the parties? A situation where two persons are speaking on behalf of a party. I speak for APC. And I would not think, after I've spoken for APC, my colleague should also get up to say he's also speaking for APC. We are not, in my opinion, in a debate. 
I will also correct the impression when it was said that the political parties are in unison. We are not in unison with, excuse me, Mr. Senator Melai and Right Honorable, with all respect, kindly let me speak. We are not in unison with them. A lot has been, a lot of law has been procured, preferred, and quoted here, most especially Section 65, which says the Commission shall have the powers. These powers have been conferred on the Commission by statute, and it is the discretion of the Commission to exercise its powers as it deems fit and not whether we demand it or we want to proclaim or dictate it. Secondly, sir, the same section has gone further that a decision of the returning officer on that subsection one may be reviewed by an election tribunal. And I think if we are not satisfied, like has been rightly said, the whole world is watching this process. We should let the process run its course. Like has been rightly observed, there were elections in other places, some of which have been contested in the courts. Why? is this being made to be different? Let the results be presented. And just to add that the provision of section 66, subsection 4, that is now being misrepresented here, says upload from polling units. But we are not here to debate whether it was uploaded or not. That cannot be reviewed here. So my appeal is for the Commission to proceed with its constitutionally, constitutionally, constitutional duty and make the results available. If we are not satisfied, we will approach the election tribunal. And that is what we are praying for. Like we said, the whole world is watching us. I appeal, sir, Mr. Chairman, that you proceed and do the needful and exercise the powers conferred on you by both the Constitution and the Electoral Act and let us have the results so we can take necessary steps as we may deem fit. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, any more? Yes, Mr. Chairman. My name is Zafanaya Jisalo. I represent NRM. Mr. Chairman, I've been in the parliament to also make the law and also make the, the electoral ad. Like my senior colleague said, I make a door, a door. The law is there. The art is there. And just like the section 65 have said, the power is given to the INEC to conduct its election. And election processes have been laid down from the polling unit, which all of us went around to vote. And then after they are count, counted, the beavers were there to know the number of people, the angels were there, then the collation to the World Collection Center. Everything was tied. The agents were there to see what all was done at the polling unit. 
And from there, the process is also there to go to the local government headquarters. This thing we are done, and then subsequently move to the world, move to the state. And in the state level, all this thing we are checked. And I don't think there was any problem. Other, all these things have been addressed right from there. Coming here, coming here to talk on this issue, we are contrary to some of the some of the agents that are saying uh, whatever they mean, we should not derail this transition. We should not derail to deceive Nigerians on what is happening. What has come here is the right thing that has been done. Mr. Chairman, my name is uh, Clement Ojupu. I represent the Labour Party. Sir, this is democracy. And we have spoken on behalf of our people. As we have promised Nigerians before today, that our votes are going to count. In addition to that, you told us, or you told Nigerians, that our result will be transmitted electronically. It is not too much to demand of you to fulfill your promises. Again, remind those that uh, is telling you of your supreme powers. Tell them you are not a military officer, but you are a leader of uh, democracy in this country. Please kindly do the needful by telling the coalition officers from the state to first tell us how these results were transmitted before now. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, please. Okay. Mr. Chairman, oh. my name is Bame Vidieno the agent for Young Progressives Party, YPP. I don't want to be seen to be taking sides on the side of anybody, but on the side of the law. I want to state that this is a fifth level of coalition. The first was at the polling unit, then at the ward coalition center, the local government coalition center, then the state coalition center before coming to this coalition center, which is the fifth. And I think if there was any issue that should have been raised concerning transmission of results or whatever, they would have been tackled at those stages by our agents, which we had at all the various levels. I think what we are doing here is not in tandem with what ought to be done. I think that this process should be allowed to go since we couldn't tackle whatever problems, issues we had at the earlier levels, then if this process is concluded, we have the election petition tribunals that could handle whatever problems uh, that are being raised here. I think the INEC at this stage now, should be allowed to go on with the coalition. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very Ch much. Chairman, can I make it a quick remark? Ah, I'm not, Chairman, the, I'm, please, please. This is... Um, no, I'm, I know I'm not a politician, and I don't intend to be one. Uh, but we all have a stake, and we all have a voice. Let me appeal to our politicians, respected individuals, to please calm down. The soul of this nation is in this hall today. And any individual that inflames this nation and create chaos, history will not forgive you. I appeal to you all. Every one of you have a very important point, and you have laid it out. Please, I don't also think in the Electoral Act that politicians have a right to stop this process. I don't like what has happened as an individual, but let's respect the law and let the law take its course. 
and you have every right to challenge the outcome please my brother dino and everybody maker please on behalf of the entire nation we are please asking you please to calm down let us have this process and then we civil society will back you and challenge whatever it is thank you um thank you very much we have heard everything that you have said but i'm going to comment on three issues the first one which was the starting point of all this lengthy conversation is over the allegation of overvoting in the result presented yesterday from HT State. What is overvoting? Where the total number of votes cast is higher than the number of accredited voters. Based on the original of the document signed by a party agents at state level and the spreadsheet before me, there was no overvoting in the Kitty State. The total number of accredited voters is 315,058. That is what is in, on the authentic document. Any other figure that shows anything at variance with this did not emanate from the commission. We provided a detailed breakdown of the scores by political parties across the board. Towards the end of the spreadsheet, we provided three columns. The first column is total valid votes and that is 308,171 total rejected votes 6,301 total votes cast valid are rejected is 314,000 472, which is actually lower than 315,058. Let me recap. Total number of accredited voters, 315,058. Total votes cast, both valid and invalid, is 314,400 and 72 there is no overvoting when you compare the total number of votes cast and the number of accredited voters if there is anything you may actually say that that, that there was under voting not over voting so that is my response to the first issue raised and i repeat myself once again for clarity if there is any figure different from what I have presented and what came from the manual forms completed by the state coalition officer for the presidential election from AKT State. Please discountenance that figure. It did not emanate from the commission. I saw some postings on the social media to the effect that the AKT election result was published on the 20th of February five days ahead of the election. And what is the evidence? They took the result presented yesterday and took the total number of registered voters for Ikiti State and concluded that the results were prepared several days before the election. All Nigerians will bear me witness that here in this hall, we presented the hard copies of the total number of registered voters in Nigeria on state-by-state -state basis and the number of PVCs collected. 
and that information as we speak is on the commission's website. So if anybody is trying to be clever by half, by taking figures from somewhere and saying, oh, these results were published or released ahead of the election, that one can only pass for fake news. And I'm sure that we are responsible citizens not to fall for fake news. So my first response is that for the election results presented for AKT, there was no overvoting. Overvoting means the total number of votes cast is higher than the number of accredited voters. The number of accredited voters is in this particular case higher than the total number of votes cast. So that's my first response. My second response is, are the figures consistent from what transpired at the polling units and what was uploaded or ought to have been uploaded to the IRF portal? I am satisfied that the figures on this spreadsheet emanated from the process that transpired at the polling units. The polling units are the only places where citizens vote. Whatever you do thereafter, it's just collation of result. And we have provided the vote scored by each political party. However, if any political party believes that the figures they have from the hard copies of the results given by their polling agents at the level of coalition, that the figures are inconsistent with what has been provided on the spreadsheet that we projected yesterday. I would like that political party to forward the information to the commission so that we can speak on the basis of facts. I like the suggestion made that the commission has power under the Electoral Act to review results, but that power is contingent upon one procedure. The process has to be concluded first before you can then talk about power to review. I want to assure political parties that any evidence that you have of any alleged wrongdoing at any level of the process, whether it's at the polling unit or at coalition level, please forward this information. And I promise you, as soon as the process is concluded, we'll then do the review as provided by law. On this note, I beg you to, for us to proceed with the process. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, now that um, we have established calm, we can calmly proceed with the process and conclude in the best interests of our country. So may I invite the resident electoral commissioner for Ogun State to present, you know, to introduce himself and for the state coalition officer for the presidential election from Ogun State to similarly introduce himself and present the result from Ogun State, the resident electoral commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> My name is Olaniyi Ijalai. I am the resident electoral commissioner, INEC in Ogun State. Thank you very much, distinguished chairman of INEC. My name is Professor Kayode Adebowale, the vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan. 
and I'm the state coalition officer for the presidential election scope of the 25th of February, 2023, in Ogun State. The result, the result for the presidential election held on the 25th of February, 2023, in Ogun State are as follows. Total number of registered voters. Total number of registered voters. Two, six, eight, eight, three, zero, five. Two, six, eight, eight, three, zero, five. Total number of accredited voters. Six, one, two, three, four, one. Six, one, two, three, four, one. Total we are Nigerians and we all know that there is nowhere on the server that results have been uploaded. It's now saying we should wait for the process to be completed before it will review, knowing fully well that once a declaration is done, there can't be any review but courts. So we are completely dissociating ourselves, and that's why we stage a workout. All the political parties here stage a workout to express the unfortunate uh, politicization and commercialization of our electoral process. How many of the parties are staging a workout? We are about nine, ten of us here. Understand? And we are saying that INEC is compromised. APC have influenced INEC, and we can see results are being changed. We have records of where elections did not take place, and results have been prepared. We have we have records of where PV and uh, the the, the beavers were not used and results have been pronounced. What is difficult in the INEC chairman showing the uploaded results so that we can compare and interrogate that with the presentation that is made by the uh, state uh, returning officers. But they cannot upload results. They cannot show us uploaded results because they know that what they are going to upload will be at variance with what they are presenting to Nigerians. So the, the electoral process have been rigged. INEC have rigged the 2023 elections, and we are completely dissociating ourselves from it, and we know what to do next. Let's listen to him. 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 I know my name. Drop your, drop your, drop your midgets now. Drop your mic now. Drop your cameras. Drop your midgets and mic, please. Drop your cameras now. Let that guy bring down that mic. The agent on the presentation coalitions We have air our observation to the national chairman of INEC. He has refused to listen to us. We made observation. He wants to us to receive and accept the doctored results that came from the collection center at various states. We do not agree with that and we have empirical evidence that we have our agent have observed us and they have informed us reliably that the Vivas machine have not been used. Where they are used, they are being compromised. And the results of the Vivas machine have not been uploaded to INEC portal. And we have observed on Saturday around the hour of 2 p.m., the INEC uh, portal. PDP. 
PDP. One, two, three, eight, three, one. One, two, three, eight, three, one. PRP. PRP. Three, five, six. Three, five, six. SDP. SDP. Seven, three, eight. Seven, three, eight. YPP. YPP. Three, six, six. Three, six, six. ZLP. ZLP. Two, three, nine, two. Total number of valid votes. Total number of valid votes. Five, eight, zero, one, two, four. Five, eight, zero, one, two, four. Total number of rejected votes. Total number of rejected votes. Three, one, three, two, four. Three, one, three, two, four. Total vote cast. Total votes cast. Six, one, one, four, four, eight. Six, one, one, four, four, eight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Prof. and Scope for Ogun State. Were there places where election was not held or uh, the outcome of the election canceled? There were places where we have cancellation. They have been compiled. The respective forms, which is uh, EC40G, was filled. During the state coalition exercise yesterday, they were all displayed. And the reason, the reasons for the cancellation ranges from overvoting. There are some that voters refuse to use the BV, uh, B BVAS, BVAS. And also there are some that was disruption which some, uh, probably some thugs came, but they did not cut away with any election material in any of our polling stations throughout Ogun State. Okay, thank you very much. Um, party agents, any comments or observations um, to the scope? Okay, please submit your result. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um. Thank you very much, Scope. And the original handwritten completed 
from ECAD has been duly countersigned by agents of political parties present during state coalition in Abiyokuta. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Red. Thank you very much. And I wish I could thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Manufactured results. And I make you that all the political parties said don't have election here because of situations. And no election took place. However, they got some compromised agents of INEC who went and were sent. You say, Kubu, you are a Nigerian of note and respect and dignity. You will not have people who want to pull you down to succeed in what they are doing. That's what I say. That we must save the integrity and save the system. And I don't think it's there too much. And we're saying it is not too late in the day for us. The food is fundamentally stated. We are looking at the process and respecting our rights. Okay. Um, no, Oyo is there. And there is another um, state also in the holding area. So are you ready, Oyo? OK, please come forward along with the state coalition officer. So, Rick, please introduce yourself, and the scope should introduce himself and present the results for Oyo State. My name is Dr. Taylor Adinion Abdurrahman, the resident electoral commissioner of Oyo State. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I am Professor Olushola Babatunde Kainde, the Vice Chancellor, Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, and the State Coalition Officer for the Presidential Election in Oyo State. Thank you, sir. Um, for the presidential election that held on the 25th of February, 2023, we have the following as the results of the election. One, the total number of registered voters in Oyo State. Total number of registered voters. Three, two, seven, six, six, seven, five. Three, two, seven, six, six, seven, five. Total number of accredited voters, eight, five, four, four, three, nine. Eight, five, four, four, three, nine. The total number of votes received by the presidential candidate of each of the political parties are as follows. Party A, Party A, 39514, 39514. Party AA, 1124. One, one, two, four. Party AAC. AAC. One, one, five, three. One, one, five, three. ADC. Six, zero, eight, zero. ADC. Six, zero, eight, zero. ADP two two nine eight two two nine eight APC four four nine eight eight four 
449884 Apga 1368 1368 APM 462 462 APP 1985 1985 BP BP 363 LP 99110 99110 NNPP 4095 NRM659 Five nine PDP one eight two nine seven seven one eight two nine seven seven PRP four three three four three three SDP one four Five one seven one four five one seven YPP five seven two five seven two ZLP two eight nine one two eight nine one Total valid votes eight zero nine four eight five eight zero nine four eight five rejected votes four two four seven one four two four seven one total votes cast Total votes cast eight five one nine five six eight five one nine five six. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Scorp. Um, were there places where elections did not hold or cancelled? Yes, sir. Elections were cancelled in. 17 polling units in 14 registration areas. Reason? Overvoting, sir. And the total number of cancelled votes were 7363. 7363. Okay, thank you very much. Any comments? Um, Observations, suggestions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, please step forward to present your result.
and is duly signed by agents of political parties. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And safe journey to Baku. Thank, thank you very much. Next, we move to Yobe State. Is the REC and the State Coalition Officer around? Is the REC as well as the scope? Okay. My name is Ibrahim Abdullahi, the resident electoral commissioner, Yobe State. My name is Professor Umaru A. Pate, the vice chancellor of the Federal University Kashere in Gombe State. I am the state coalition officer for the presidential election of 25 February. 2023 in Yobe State. With me is Ibrahim Abdullahi, the resident electoral commissioner for Yobe State. The result for the presidential election held on 25th February 2023 in Yobe State are as follows. Total number of registered voters, 1485. 146. Total number of registered voters, 1485146. Total number of accredited voters, 398874. Total number of accredited voters, 39. 8874. Total number of votes received by the presidential candidate of each of the political parties are as follow A party, 312. A party, 312. AA, Nine one five A nine one five AAC two two one AAC two two one ADC one zero three Four ADC one zero three four ADP one two nine five ADP one two nine five APC one five one four five Sorry, one five one four five APC one five one four five nine five nine. Am I correct? Okay. One five one four five nine. Abga. Abga eight seven five Abga eight seven five APM four seven two APM four seven two APP two five six APP two five six BP 
149, BP 149, LP 2406, LP 2406, NNPP 18270, NNPP 18270, NRM 672, NRM 672, PDP 198567, PDP 198567. Seven. PRP two six five. PRP two six five. SDP one nine two. SDP one nine two. YPP six three zero. YPP six. Three zero ZLP four zero seven ZLP four zero seven total number of valid votes three seven eight three nine seven total number of valid votes three seven eight three Nine seven. Total number of rejected votes one eight nine three four. One eight nine three four. Total votes cast three nine seven three three one. Total votes cast three nine seven. Three, three, one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any polling units where elections were not held or cancelled? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Two, one in FICA. We had one of the polling booths with about 768 voters registered and total number of PVCs collected, 768. But because of faulty BVA, they couldn't vote. Then we also had Jakusko with LG Court Ofo. One polling uh, unit also affected with about 1,000, I mean, sorry, 1,073 voters. There was destruction of polling materials, and because of that, it was cancelled. The reports are attached to the submission here, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Any comments, any observation? Okay, please step forward to submit your result. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very Good luck. Much. Break. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. I understand that Inugu State will be ready 
in the next 10 minutes. So we wait for the next 10 minutes to take Inugu. I also understand that Lagos and Gombe are approaching the building. Thank you. So 10 minutes, we'll take Inugu State. Documenting the Nigerian story.
Um, I raised the issue of the fact that in accordance with the provision of the Electoral Act, um, Section 60 and Section 64, um, 4 of um, the Electoral Act 2002 has amended that there will be transmission of results from the polling units. And the INEC chairman and Festus Zokoye have repeatedly told Nigerians that there will be transmission of, of, of results from polling units directly to the server. And we found out that this has not been done, INEC failed in this regard. And when this issue was, when I raised this issue today, supported by other party agents, the results party agents. Anyway, we, um, I raised the issue of the fact that in accordance with the provision of the Electoral Act, um, Section 60 and Section 64, um, 4 of um, the Electoral Act 2002 has amended that there will be transmission of results from the polling units. And the INEC chairman and Festus Okoye have repeatedly told Nigerians that there will be transmission of, of, of results from polling units directly to the server. And we found out that this has not been done. INEC failed in this regard. And when this issue was, when I raised this issue today, supported by other party agents, the national chairman of INEC evaded, um, vehemently evaded that because what section 47 3 emphasize is that wherever um, the, the card reader or the beavers fail, if they cannot get a replacement, election should be cancelled in those areas. And we have seen for the presentation of the um, results from um, Ekiti yesterday that some places were cancelled as a result of bypassing um, beavers. So the only way to detect that beavers have been bypassed is for us to see the uploaded results. And we insisted that the chairman should show us here now the uploaded results state by state, just like the way they are displaying the collated results they are presenting. And that is the only way to test the veracity and authenticity of these results. If not, we are only here to endorse the fraud that has been done from the unit to the world to the state. We are not here to rubber stamp infractions. We are not here to rubber stamp the uh, abnormalities that have been done. We are here to check them. But the, the, the national chairman of INEC is not giving us opportunity to, 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 to question what they are doing. He's saying that all has been done, meaning we are just here to rubber stamp. And we are going to prove that we are not here to rubber stamp. We have no other country to call our home but this country. We are going to do everything humanly possible to make sure that the right thing must be done. What exactly are you going to do now, you and the other political party? We, 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 we have just met now, and we are going to make a presentation by the time we resume. And if they insist that they are not going to respond to us, then you will see the action we will take. But we want to tell you, we, but we want to tell you that we will not allow, having suffered a pain in this country, having suffered poverty, hunger, kidnapping, killings, we will not allow a continuation of failure. We must make sure that the right thing is done. And National Chairman is putting his integrity on test. We are putting his integrity on test. Nigerians are watching. The world is watching. Even the dead are watching to see what INEC will do. But the battle to make sure that only result, authentic results will be will be announced here today is the battle of no retreat, no surrender. Mr. Chairman, the purpose for amending the Electoral Act and making electronic transmission of results from polling units is to enhance the transparency, credibility of the process. In accordance with Section 65 and Section 64, 4 of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended, I want to demand that while the two other screens can show the results as presented by the returning officer,